Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective perspective. <laughs> Can you give us the intro, Landon, in the WWE voice? And coming out of the left side of the ring, weighing in at 165 pounds, walking up, ready to knock this one out of the park. We have Jordan Fisher. <laughs> Coming in at 5'10", 175 pounds, this man lifts like a freaking machine. We have Caleb Miller. The boys are riled up. Yeah. They're riled up. Yeah. We're here, baby. Let's get, it. Let's get it. Let's get it and roll. You guys want to hear a crazy idea? I, I thought of this it. is the starting topic. I, I, this was my very first thought of the day, like two mornings ago. Mm-hmm. Have you ever like woken up and then you just have that first thought and you... It's like really inspiring thought. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. It's almost like you're thinking about it in your sleep, and then, and then you kind of think about it whenever you wake up, and you're like, hell yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's all about it, like the first five minutes. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking. I don't know for sure. I'm not like full, like dead set on this. I'm playing around with the idea of hiking from Springfield to St. Louis the day after graduation because I graduate mm-hmm. this upcoming December. The only problem is it's Bold. fucking December. Oh, it's December. Yeah, Damn. that's bold. Wow. I think it's bold even when it's nice outside. That is yeah, bold. true. Going in December. I mean, what is that? Two hundred miles. Yeah, it's like yeah, right about miles. right about. And if I did thirty mile days, it'd be about six and a half days. I think it comes out to that like perfectly. Yeah. Which hi- which hiking which trail are you gonna take? Highway forty four. Uh, Katy Trail. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> it's the gotcha. best hiking gotcha. trail I know of. <laughs> just right down the side of Highway forty four. I was thinking about that. I was like, there's no way I'm hiking down a highway. I mean, all those were the only routes available. I mean, all you need is a you know piece of bamboo and a burlap sack, and you're good to go. <laughs> and you're in. What's the bamboo for? To hold the burlap sack. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. I, yeah, I'm going to start yeah. using my head the rest of this podcast. Come yeah. on, dude. Homeless 101. <laughs> it's not, re- not a requirement. <laughs> but there's actually a guy doing it right now to raise awareness for um, – What's he's raising awareness for something. It's, it's a not, big deal. It's not that fat fuck that's bicycling across the country that's stopping at every motel and eating pizza, is it? You know, I don't, I don't know think guy. so. I think that's a different story. Oh, okay, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's raising awareness. This guy's just getting fat. He's just <laughs> eating pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Why is he burning it all? Yeah. Oh, man. Well, at least he rose awareness because you're clearly very aware of the cause. Yeah, so. one guy's uh, raising not awareness. Good, not good. I need to do my research on that one. But your yeah, guy, Your guy's raising, raising awareness, and my guy's just raising cholesterol. <laughs> Let's get it. But then he burns it right off. I know. I know. No, I, I honestly, I think what inspired me was Mike Posner. And then I also, I know two buddies, uh, one of them who hiked like a thousand miles and uh-huh. however long, like he spent like two months of his summer, one summer, but he had to go back for school. Mm-hmm. And then another one of my friends that his graduation, I guess, what, what would you, excursion after he graduated college was to hike the Pacific Crest Trail, which is on the West Coast, it starts in Mexico, goes to Canada up through California, Oregon, then Washington. Oh, yeah, the Rocky Mountain Trail or something like that. I've seen There's that one in the middle. There are three of them, like three mm-hmm. major hiking mm-hmm. trails in the United States, one on the West Coast, one up through the Rockies, and mm-hmm. then the Appalachian Trail, which is on the East Coast. Right, right. That's so I know a guy from high school who did it, too. No. Really? It's really crazy. That's awesome. And it took him, like, four months. Four months? It took him a long time. That's yeah. That's actually, like, a really good time, though. 30-mile days for – Four or five oh, months. Shit. I don't know the exact dates on it, but yeah, that's how you he was cooking. Foot. That's wild. Yeah, I can't imagine. It'd be, I mean, it'd be beautiful. It'd be amazing. Like being on your own in the wild for that long with everything that you own on your back, like that'd be that'd be great. That you would be insane. You know, it would, you know, it would not be beautiful though. The gangrene you're about to get on all, all up in your feet. <laughs> Wait, what's that? that? Yeah, describe <laughs> gangrene for us. You don't know what gangrene is? I thought you is. were talking about some gang that, like, rapes hikers or something like no, that. No, I, no, I we don't want not. that. That's what my head No, nah, you guys ever heard of Jungle Foot? Never heard of it. Those dudes back in Vietnam used to get it just from their feet being soaking wet and having to walk every day. And it, like, eats your foot. It's like, I don't know. It's like this, I don't know if it's a parasite or a bacteria or something like that, but it, like, gets all up in your skin and it causes your flesh to rot and it eats away at your bone. It's fucking gross. But that's why you gotta change your socks. Are you trying to are you trying to scare me out of this right now? Because I'm not at all starting not at to all. think not otherwise. Just bring extra pairs of socks, and you'll be all right. So uh, let me backtrack. You want to do that after graduation, 
or go from Springfield to St. Louis. Either one would be badass. Well, I I probably I don't know if I'd have any other time in my life to do this unless it'd be like, you know, four or five years down the road or something like that. Yeah. But my life's pretty planned out besides pretty much between now and Christmas or graduation and Christmas. Like gotcha. I have that gap. So I was like, might as well. Like I, I would have enough time to do it and get home before Christmas and get mm-hmm. home for the holidays and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Would be crazy. Yeah. Would Appalachian Trail. Story. I don't know if you have time for, but you should you I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. That's six months of your life or however, <laughs> however crazy. many months. Yeah. I mean, that's so badass to anybody who did it, but just yeah. opportunity cost, mm-hmm. man. I just don't know if it's worth it. For sure. Me and Luke used to always just bullshit and be like, dude, if we can't get jobs out of college, we're going to row the whole Missouri. We're going to start up in Montana and row that shit all the way to STL. That would be insane. I know. We were thinking about doing it. You can do it in like a month. <coughs> that's a long time on a boat. <laughs> Kayak. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, it'd be what great. are you going? You're going with current, I'm assuming, right? Mm-hmm. Your back would just yeah. be shredded. Oh my god, dude! Your whole your arms. I mean, yeah, it, it, you'd be you'd be in some serious shape. And then you just got chicken legs. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't worked your legs at all that time. But I don't know. It does going. take some some leg strength to row a, a canoe or a kayak. I, mean, I know the rowing at the gym, like that thing where you go like back and forth, yeah, that definitely boy. works your legs. That is my mm-hmm. shit. Is that so? It's the same kind of concept you're working with, like no, same muscle movement. Well, it depends on what kind of kayak you're gonna. I mean, if, if you're just gonna get one of those kayaks that you sit on top of and then row, I mean, I guess you could work something out like that. But most of those kayaks, like the professional kayaks, you actually put your legs in them, and so oh. that's that's set in place to where you can roll in case you get like tipped over you can actually roll over in the water and get yourself back up but i used to do a little bit of kayaking my dad my dad has one but um it was fun me and landon went on a float trip recently that oh my god really shit hit the fan quickly quickly yeah shit hit the fan and then blew a bunch of stank back in our face real fast we got stanked on Mm -hmm. yep let's hear the story oh my god you want to tell it or you want me to Take it away. I'll fill in the in, I'll fill in the gaps. Okay. Okay. So I got a cousin named Sean Green. Shout out to Sean Green, dude. That dude man is an OG. But um, boy. he he hit me up and he's like, Hey man, you want to go floating? He's like, Bring Cass, my girlfriend, and uh, whatever other buddies you you, you want to bring. And so this dude hits me up, and another buddy named Brendan hits me up, and um, or actually it was I, I invited Brendan first, and then the like the day of or the night before we we're about to leave, he's like, Hey man, can Caleb come? I was like, man, fuck yeah, dude. Bring him up, you know, bring his ass along. Let's get let's get on the river. So we like leave, we get there, whatever. I can't call I, I'm trying to call my cousin. I can't get a hold of him, dude. His phone's dead. His fuck and he's like the night before, he's like, Well, number one, he gives me the worst directions to get there. Like this place is I mean, it's a semi legitimate like float place, but the, of course they put in at the most bunk place possible. Like uh, it's like a mile down from where all, everybody else is putting in. And he doesn't tell me that. And he's like, dude, when you get there, just give me a call, man. Like, I'll, ha- I'll have my phone on me, you know, like, and, and I'll be able to walk you through everything that, that we need to do. I was like, okay, that works. Get there, call him. His phone's dead. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> no. I can't make contact with this man. And, um, but you get good service. I have good service. I got Verizon. I don't but know. It doesn't I, matter because his phone's I, dead. Yeah, I don't that is a Verizon marketing plug right there for <laughs> the listeners. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. Shout out the sponsor, sponsor real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Verizon, if you're trying to pay me, hit me up. I'll send you my uh, <laughs> routing numbers, and we'll get this show on the road. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, I don't even know what kind of su- like what kind of service he had. Sprint, Cricket, Boost, whatever the fuck you dicking <laughs> with. <laughs> get the fuck out of here with that shit. So anyway, not gonna we, cut it. We can't we can't get a hold of his ass and I was like all right dude well we we just got to put in man like we'll find them on down the river so we we get in the river we got four dude we know we got three dudes my girlfriend a whole cooler Probably full a of beer. fifty pound cooler a if fifty I had to guess. pound cooler full of beer wow, okay in this one canoe <laughs> you guys came to play you came to play we were way over the weight limit to that, say the least that we borrowed Ready from my uncle and we drove his truck up there. Okay. <laughs> and uh I have a feeling I know where this story's going. Oh no. Based on what you said a second ago. Yeah, yep. yeah, no, dude, just wait. And so we <laughs> and so we get in the water and I look over and our canoe is only about an inch up out of the water. 
<laughs> and so, like, I mean, literally, if one of us moves in the wrong direction, like, this, this canoe is going to fill up. And so we're like, all right, everybody's hold steady. We'll eventually find somebody, and then we can split up. So we don't all, all have to ride in the same canoe. Uh, so we get about a mm, half mile down the river, and I see his jolly ass, you know, his hev- heavy ass and a tie-dye cut-off <laughs> shirt with his beard rocking with a su- – I don't even know what kind of hat he's got on, some sort of sunburrow fishing hat. This is the guy that you were trying to call? My cousin Sean. His cousin Sean. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I see his ass. Okay, he's okay. over there flagging me down. He's like, hey, cuz, hey, cuz. I get over there, I was like, dude, I will fucking kill you, man. Like, <laughs> it's an hour past since we were supposed to put in, and we got a 14-mile float today. I was like, dude, and they're already trashed. They're already just trashed, and it's not even 9 a.m. yet. <laughs> I was like, damn, this is going to be one night. But uh, so we we finally meet up with them. We get on the river. The first thing that gets in our way is, so my, my girlfriend volunteered to ride in a canoe with this fat bitch. I don't remember what her name was. <laughs> Uh, Solid description. Yeah, uh, <laughs> sorry, fat bitch, if you're hearing this. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what else to call you. I no offense what your name or anything. Was, just you know, descriptive. You, you uh, you know, did kind of ruin that float for her. But uh, anyway, no, that's not the point of the story. <laughs> but, um, yeah, dude. So that, she dude, is a key piece of the puzzle. Yeah, she's a. Yeah, she. You know, I mean, like that's that's that event that like you know like you know you know that event that just happens like when you're supposed to have a really fun day. And it's like getting started and, you know, some shit happens. Like there's like there's just that one little event that happens early on in the day that was supposed to go so well. And after that happens, you just like you're just kind of left in a little sour mood for the, like the rest of the day. And it's just totally just killing all the vibe. downhill from there. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's the snowball effect. Mm-hmm. This fat bitch was a snowball effect. So okay. what happened and, uh, with the fat bitch in the canoe? Landed? Anyway, anyway, anyway. <laughs> so sh- sh- they're going down the river, just my girlfriend and her. And then it's me and Caleb in one canoe, maybe maybe Brendan too, so. but we're kind of ahead of them, and we saw them get caught up on a log, on like the side, and so we, t- but the the current's moving, and we're so you trying can't to go back. So we we can't go back. So we we pull over we to tried. the side. We tried. We tried. We gave it a we gave it a solid effort. Paddled as hard as we could. All three of us men just no no progress. No shot. So we weren't going anywhere. No shot. And so we finally pull off over to the side. I'm yelling. I don't. I don't even know if they can hear me. I get up onto the side. I start walking back. I'm getting. I'm. I'm. I'm looking down at these plants, man. And there's ticks, like, you know, like <laughs> over here, just trying to wait. You know, there's. Just, I mean, everywhere I go, there's you know ticks, <laughs> lizards, snakes. You know, you know. I mean, I grew. I grew up, you know, playing in the woods, so I don't give a fuck. But you know, I was just walking through, trying to get back to them. You know, having a dick with barbed wire over here. You know, fi- I finally get back to them, dude. Get, you know, get in that fat bitch. I, I look, my, my girlfriend, this canoe is filled up with water. The fat bitch is sitting up on the bank. Her happy beach well ass is just sitting there soaking up the rays while my girlfriend's trying to, and my girlfriend's like, what, 5'4", 125 pounds? Like, she's not going to move this full-size canoe. She's going to be up. mad you dropped her weight on the pod, bro. <laughs> <laughs> We'll we'll edit Maybe. that piece out. Don't Maybe. worry. Yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway, so I go over to help her get this canoe out. We finally get, get it up out of the water. That fat that you know fat girl is like, I don't do well with hills. I don't do well with getting. I don't do well with water. <laughs> I'm. Scared. I don't do well with water. Yeah, I was like, then why did you come on a float? What? Sensitive. Wow. A sensitive mm-hmm. fat bitch. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's, yeah. it's a sensitive fat bitch that doesn't like the outdoors, but yet she's going on a 14-mile float trip. Now, you tell me how that makes any sense. Wait, this is a little off topic. Did Yo. she float or did she sink? She uh, was a sinker. I don't okay. know. <laughs> I, I, but I feel, like with all that, I feel like with all that buoyancy, she stands a good chance of floating, but she mostly sank the whole vibe of the trip. Uh, yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Boom. <laughs> boom. <laughs> and... Um, so we finally get back on track, and I was so mad, dude. Like I, I was just ready to, I was ready to knock this chick out. Anyway, let's get on with this. So we keep floating down, and I can't remember exactly. Wait, like wait. So she left Cassie like left for dead almost, like no. struggling to She's get out. She's sitting or? up on the yeah, pretty much. She's just leaving Cassie there, you know, just like just chilling. So on it was like up on the bank. by herself trying to lift this canoe mm-hmm. out. It was like yes. shallow, but the canoe yeah. was completely yeah. sunk. Yeah, and, and I was over there. And then by the time I got there, I saw all the, all the shit that was going. On. I saw my girlfriend struggling, you know, and this fat girl up on the bank not helping at all. And I was like, and I kind of got mad, you know. I, w- I wanted to say something, but you know, I wanted to get this canoe up out of the water first. And so, um, 
I had to help her get that out. We finally did. We finally got back out on the water, and I was in uh, I was in the boat with Cass for a little bit. And, and me. So Brendan's an angel. Brendan is an angel. And he got on the in the boat with Fat Bitch. Yeah, he, he did. took it for the team. He did. Oh. It was great. Sounds Angela. like a team player. Angela was her name. Yeah, Angela. That's, it. That's right. That's, That's it. right. Okay. That's right. Angela, so. aka Fat Bitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. There you go. There you yeah. go. Fat Ange. We'll just, re- we'll, just Bad re- we'll just refer to her as Fat Ange. Yeah. <laughs> and, the uh, singer. <laughs> the singer. <laughs> and uh, we finally get on down the ways a little bit. And it, and keep in mind, dude, like this was the coldest day of the summer. It's probably 40. The fo- yeah, dude, motherfucker was like 45, 45 degrees, dude. Yeah. So you're in the water, but you don't actually want to touch the water. I mean, I'm soaked. Oh, Ca- wow. Cass is soaked. I mean, we had to get this thing up. This canoe was tipped over. On this log, just totally sunk. I mean, I had to get this. I had to use every ounce of strength I had to get this thing up out of the water, man. I mean, you don't know how much a four-person canoe filled with water weighs. So I find we, you know, whatever we we get on down the road, uh, or or the or the waterway, and um, I'm trying to think what what happened next. That was like the I'll pick it up. I'll go, pick it up. Pick it up from here. That's I don't even know who was in my canoe for the rest of the day. We were pretty turned up, but I that like, canoe fuck. tipped. Four times Four after times. that initial time. I can't even tell you how many beer, how much beer we lost on that trip, but it you was know, tragic. Thank goodness that that cooler was a floater, because mm-hmm. that cooler went in a lot of times. I lost my Birkenstocks, I lost my shirt, mm-hmm. I lost most of my belongings. Cassie lost a, her all her clothes, pretty yeah. much. <laughs> it just kept tipping. And we were in the water all day. And every time you're losing something. Every yeah. time we're losing something, dude. I don't know if it was just like the current or if we had way too many people in it and we couldn't maneuver right, but it was fucked, dude. And we were we were pretty turned and up. And we were pretty fucked up. So that's, that's, that it got to the point where I was so turned up that I was trying to tip because I thought it was so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So tip a bunch of times, keep going down the down the river, and then – we got maybe two miles left, but we are so cold. Dude, I'm sh- I'm straight shivering. Lips are purple. Mm-hmm. We're done. Oh, it's so bad. we say, let's get out of the water. Mm-hmm. Let's just put the canoe up. Let's find a ride. Let's get an Uber to the truck and yeah. come pick the canoe up. We're out in bum fuck biggity nowhere. <laughs> nowhere. And, and we're all we're, we're all Uber. so fucked up. We're like thinking this is downtown Springfield, like. Hey man, let's just call an Uber and have us come, you know, have him come pick our ass happy asses up and drive us back to the parking lot with the canoe on top of his Prius. Oh, uh, no <laughs> chance. Yeah, didn't happen. But we do hop, we hop on a school bus. It was taking some people to a campsite, and I ended up knowing one of the guys on the bus. Yeah, how crazy is that? Totally random. And he's like, "Yeah, bro, come back to the campsite. We got." booze we got drugs come back we'll have a good time so this I'm is like, your angel yeah this is your other angel. i'm in yeah Bra- another Brandon angel and, uh, but uh, here's shouts here's out the, forest there wow you go. yeah but here's the most fucked up part we left the canoe at the put out place in the grass <laughs> just left it there <laughs> we just left it there with our backpack with but our I, phones and our and the keys and wallets you name it everything, everything. why'd you guys leave all that because we were so fucked up, but I grabbed. <laughs> didn't even think about it. You're just great like, question. I want to get no, out of here. That's a great question. But you know, Jordan. but you know what? I didn't forget to grab the oars. <laughs> yeah, he brought what? the oars, just in <laughs> case. I brought the, I brought the oars. On in the case you got to fight off any bears, of right? Course, <laughs> like I, there I was any confrontation. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that goes to show you how fucked up we. Were. I mean, how many? I mean, between four people, we probably brought like sixty beers. It was something stupid. A lot of beers. So, did you guys get your shit stolen, or dude, just wait? <laughs> so we get we get to the campsite. In comes the breathalyzer. It's like a twenty-five minute drive to this campsite, and by that time, I'm kind of sobering up. And Cass has kind of already been so bullshit. When she freaks out. <laughs> yeah, no, that is kind of bullshit because I was <laughs> losing my fucking mind up at the campsite. But Cassie was sobered up, and she was ta- She was telling me she's like, "I just can't believe you left all of our shit <laughs> in that in that canoe." And I was like, "Left our shit in the canoe? I, honey, I grabbed the oars." And she was like, <laughs> "You left our phones. Good job, babe. <laughs> you left. We left our wallets. We left everything in the backpack." And we left your uncle's canoe <laughs> and the keys to the truck. I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> we did. <It's laughs> <So> exact response. <laughs> oh, oh, fuck. Was oh, that, fuck. was that, like, that was you one of realized oh, in that moments. moment? Like, so you realized in that moment, did the rest of the group realize in that moment? Like, did you have any idea at this point? No. I don't, I don't think I processed it until we were back at the truck. Yeah, will you pass me a seltzer? 
Dude, I think one of our beers spilled all over the bottom of the cooler. Goodness gracious. It's tragedy. It's all right, though. Goodness gracious. A, a seltzer. Uh, grab one of those natties. This is, uh, shouts out Natty Light, another one of Jordan's sponsors. Oh, the Catalina Natty Lime Light. Mixer. Makes me happy. Mm-hmm. So, long story short. Oh, yeah, there we go. My buddy says that Landon and Cass can take his car mm-hmm. and go find our truck. We all finished our beers at, like, the exact same time, by the way. It's impressive. You got to appreciate the small things. Yeah. You, gotta, you got to appreciate things like that. There you go. Well done, gentlemen. So my buddy offers his car, and Landon's like, okay, I was like, let's do it. And he's like, oh, what an OG. but I have a breathalyzer in my car. Yeah, this motherfucker's on parole or DUIs Perfect. or something like that. Perfect. But it's cool because I'm on parole, too. So, you know, like, it worked out just fine. You know, so we get in his car. I'm way too fucked up to drive. I blow on that bitch, and it's let's, like. Yeah, let's. <laughs> <laughs> Fail. I couldn't believe you even tried in the first place. He's like, <laughs> yeah. As I'm, as I'm, I'm like, I'm bro, like, it's not gonna work. I'm like trying to, I'm, try, I'm like trying to like, you know, clear my vision enough to see which hole I need to blow through here, and you know, keep in mind there's only one. So Cassie takes it. She blows. She's clean. She's sober. She's so pissed off. She sobered herself up. And so she gets in the car. We start it up. Who's she mad at? She mad at you or the just, whole, just, just the, the whole world. situation? Okay, and yeah, yeah. She's cold, just fucking freezing. And I'm keep in mind, I'm losing my goddamn mind up at this campsite, swinging the oars around. <laughs> yeah, dude, I was ready to beat somebody's <laughs> ass yeah, over nothing, dude. I, I was just, I mean, like, do you, you know, like, have you ever been? And I'm not an angry drunk by any means. Like, I've never got. I real, I rarely get angry, really ever. Like, it takes a lot to piss me off. But have you, ever, have you, ever, like, like being drunk? And angry at the same time is never a good mix. Oh, never. 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 Way less rational thinking. Well, I mean, you're already less rational whenever you're angry, and then whenever right. you're drunk, or it le- just makes way it way less rational. It just makes it worse. Yeah, totally. So I'm swinging this oar around. I'm throwing them on the ground. I'm hitting them up against trees, and Caleb's friend's friend came over and talked to them. They're like, man, this guy needs to get the fuck <laughs> out of our campsite. He's t- Like, they're all doing these drugs. You know, they're probably on psychedelics. So, you know, like, they're like... Man, this guy's total. This guy's nuts, man. This guy's losing his damn mind. <laughs> and I'm over there. I'm slamming shit, cussing, dude. I'm so fucking pissed off. And uh, anyway, we start the car. And it's on E. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I think you made it like 15 miles before well, you, you realized, realize oh, it's on it E. It was on E until we made it like 15 and miles. And you're in bumfuck nowhere. And the gas This is just is a on. story of a <laughs> series of unfortunate <laughs> events. Kept getting worse. <laughs> oh. ga- Dude, by the time we got that thing back, I mean, it was like, <laughs> it was like sputtering. Yeah, it was and running on fumes. <laughs> I mean, just getting, I mean, rolling back into the camps. I was so fucked up. Like, I didn't even care because we, did, we, we we couldn't make it far enough to go back. Like, well, number one, we had no fucking clue where the bus came from. I had no idea where to go to pick up this canoe. Anyway, drop off the car. I was like, brother, thank you so much for, like, you know, li- for lending us your car, even though we didn't find it. Like, I'm going to have to find plan B. So I go up. I saw the bus driver, the same bus that we hopped on. Wait, where's your cousin at this point? He kept going down the river. He kept going down the river. It was me, Landon, and Cass mm-hmm. who were like, it's cold. Let's get off. So it was only you three at this point. We, we were all on the same the bus. canoe. Yeah. We were all on the same Wait, canoe. where did Fat Bitch go? Fat who Bitch knows? is still going down the river, too. Okay. Yeah. Everybody, like, there was yeah. probably 15, 10 to 15 other people with us, and they just kept going. Okay, I mean, absolutely. Yeah. I remember finally. So they like, didn't know where we went. Yeah. I remember finally getting out of the water, like, when we... You know, we're about to get on that bus. Like, we saw that that put out. We, like, you know, kind of rode over there, pulled up on the bank, look over my shoulder, and I see Brennan and the fat bitch go down just the river. waving goodbye. Brennan's just, pa- <laughs> Brennan's just confused. laid out flat. Oh, goodness. My head is being grabbed. <laughs> What's up, Grant? Hey, Dad. Uh, hey. We this room from 9 to 10 to film a porno. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah. It's about 8.55. Oh, with it's me, kinda, right? It's kind of like the study room's <laughs> up at the library, so if you could just... Wrap it up. Are you Wait. a star, or are you just oh, filming? Oh, dude, I got I'm, your, I'm in I the got running. Your, I got your pun there. If you want to just wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't even Unintentional. That. I didn't catch that either. Well done. Either. Unintentionally funny. Un- I, Tip- I, typical Grant. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> Wait, am I, hey, am I also a part of this porto? Or? Yes. Okay, okay. That's what I thought. You've I got three love. burly men that are fully willing to be in your porno Too here. Too much testosterone in this room. And we have the camera oh, rolling right there. Tea. There's the camera. Hi, T. Right 
You've hey. got, you've got, if you're going to film Can you do that for the camera, if please? You, if you're gonna, if the you're lady gonna, viewers well, need this. Here's the, I was just going to mention the camera. If you're going to film a porno, you got one problem, bro. Your camera's not 4K. <laughs> not enough Ks. <laughs> Too much T, not enough Ks. Hey, I got 4K saying? right here. Nobody watches porn on 4K. <laughs> 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 what That's a guy. Good. Oh, what a guy, man. Um. Anyway, where was I? Uh, oh, yeah. I lo- bus. I go, got yeah, on the bus. Got on the bus. So I get, I wait, wait, where's this bus coming into the story? So the bus, like a school bus that or? picked us up from the side yeah, of the river if you brought us to the campsite. Buses. Yeah, school okay, bus. Okay. So at like rivers where float trips happen, there's school buses shuttling people around all the time. You're right, you're right. right? Okay, yeah. And so we hop back on this bus and we're like, hey, bro. I just love it with the bus driver. I was like, you want bro, this? in a second. Cool. I'll, I'll give it a go. Cool. I, I get on the you're bus. You're a good man. And Absolutely. I just level with this bus driver. I was like, dude, look, I'm fucked up. We're all fucked up. And I done fucked up. And I'm trying to get get us unfucked up. So if you're trying to help us get unfucked up, that would be fucking dope. And he was like, what you need? And I was like, we need to go back to the put-in place, the put-out place, and we need to get our canoe. And we need to get our keys and our wallet and all this shit in my phone. That may or may not be there. That may or may not be there. It's been an, a couple hours at this point. Mm-hmm. And uh, Had it been overnight, though? No, no, no. We were at the campsite no, for an yeah, we hour and a half, two hours. For, yeah, Is it still daytime? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Awesome. So he's like, well, hop on. He's like, I got, I got two stops to make, and then I can take you to the put-out place that I picked you guys up. Uh-huh. I was like, dude. I was like, you are saving the day right oh, yeah. now. And so we're, we're on this bus for like 45 minutes. And Brendan's mom calls you because you were the only one that had your phone. No, I had Brendan's phone. Oh, you had Brendan's phone. And his mom calls. Oh, yeah. Tell that one. And so I'm ham- I'm so drunk at this point. I'm literally at the point where I'm, I have us all huddled up. I'm praying for us. I'm like, God, protect us. Help us find the boat. Like, I'm freaking out. Dear Lord Jesus. And so Brendan's mom called. And I'm like, is this Brendan's sister? Who am I talking to? She's like, no, this is Brendan's mom. And she was so chill the whole time. I'm like, we lost Brendan. He's somewhere on the river. We're in a school bus. I think we're going to be okay. As soon as we find Brendan, we'll get him in contact with you. And she was cracking up laughing. Like, I think she had his sister like come listen to this <laughs> and the funniest just, thing is are I'm, you like trying to sound professional but you guys are completely no, just no, fucked up no, oh we were a mess no we were <laughs> no we were sending out a mad sos like cry for help and here's the thing i know brendan real well i know his family real well and they're they're, they're super christian and they're over here listening to our dumb asses talk like man we don't know where brendan is we don't know where we are we're gonna die <laughs> we are fucked just laughing <laughs> they knew we were fine they knew they knew we were fine they were like i remember miss mckenna saying this over over speakerphone she's like guys just sit back relax enjoy this moment because you guys are going to be telling stories about this for the rest of your lives what do you know we're still and here, here we are and here we yeah. are telling stories about it she was right what an og shout out to leslie mckenna one of the most OG Shouts moms out I've ever met in my entire life. And so we were like, Miss McKenna, I promise, like, whenever we find Brennan, like, we're going to give you a call back. Like, we're, we're, we're going to find him. Like, just for you giving <laughs> us that little sense of assurance, we're going to find him. We're going to find him, and we're going to come save the day. And so it was like 45 minutes we were on this bus ride, dude. And I was flipping. I was like, man, our shit's going to be gone, dude. I was like, man, that canoe's not mine. I'm going to, I had like $400 in my wall in my wallet. I was like, I'm going to lose my phone, my, the keys to the truck. That's not even mine. I was like, dude, what the hell is happening right now? And we, f- we get back to the put out place and our shit's still there. Everything's there. Wow. It wasn't even touched. Everything's there. Everything is there. Wow. I was like, if this doesn't prove that God exists, I don't know what <laughs> does, dude. Yeah. I, I've had too many events in my life happen that just proves the, exist- the existence of God and not believe. That was one of them. And because think about it, dude, you're on the river with a bunch of jank river rats. Who knows what the hell, is, you know, I mean. Yeah, like, all I mean, the traffic just going by, oh looking yeah. over, seeing a free many, canoe. Who knows how many and a backpack. people got pulled up out of the river at that exact point walked past all of our shit and didn't touch it i was like man the world must be full of some good people dude luckily we're in the midwest 
And um, anyway. But how was your shit? Was your shit put underneath the canoes? No. No, no, was no. It no. Oh, so it we scattered canoe, out? Uh, no, it was on top of the seat. <laughs> yeah, the backpack was just sitting inside oh, the canoe. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, so so bus driver. That I think we paid him fifty snack. bucks. Yeah, I was I, I I level. I was like, dude, I will pay you fifty bucks. I, pr- I I have it right here in my wallet. I was I'll pay you fifty bucks if we can get all this shit back to the truck because I don't know where the fuck our put out place is to the you know spot that we're supposed to go to take us back to the campsite where they're supposed to rendezvous us back to the. I have no idea. I wasn't told dick, and the guy was like, all right. So we stuffed this 16-foot-long canoe in the back of the bus. Back of the school bus. Just <laughs> shove it in that bitch. <laughs> like, mean, jam it in there. <laughs> Cass is so cold, just like, what dude, the she, fuck dude, is she, going on? She's just shivering. She's blue, man. Like, I mean, I felt so bad. Like, that's like, as a man, like, you, like there's, there's very seldom times where you just feel, like, completely helpless. And that was one of them. That yeah, was Because, like, there was nothing that I wanted more than just for her to feel, like, safe, warm, you know, and 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 feel like some sense of comfort. And like now that things were kind of starting to get like you know put back into place, I was like, thank God, you know, finally this bus driver is like helping us out. Like the first bit of help we've had all damn day. And so and we found the truck, and got the backpack. The oh, perfect. The, the canoe. He dropped us off. Took us right back by the truck. You paid him well. You paid him well. I, he did, was paid I well. did pay him well, but at that point I didn't care. I was like, dude, whatever, like whatever you want, man. I was like, I will pay you because we're we're not we don't have no service. Like we're we're screwed. I mean, like if you don't help us out, we're toasty. Yeah, right, right. Like some damn strudels, and um, and so we got back to the truck and we drove. It, we're still missing Brendan though. <laughs> so now we gotta Brendan. find where Brendan's at. But you have a sober driver at the truck, right? Eh. Sober driver, sober yeah. driver. What's that? Oh shit! I All mean, right. I mean, enough. I mean, we have a DD if that's what you mean. But I mean, I don't. I mean, I don't know if it was sober. It or had. Not. It had been a long time by the time we got back. Oh wait, I was truck, driving. That's right. Yeah, I don't even remember. It had probably been three and a half hours since yeah. the last drink since we got out of the water. It was. It was a long process. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Long, yeah. Long cold process. Uh huh. Long, long cold process. And I and we get back to the truck, and we don't know where to go there. But so I start calling Sean. I still can't get an answer, so I call my other cousin, Emily. She picks up. She tells us some country-ass fucked up directions to get back to the campsite. Hey, it worked, though. And it worked. Country-ass directions. Country-ass directions Life worked. Lifesaver. Turn- what, what do country-ass directions entail? Well, you're going to go down a dirt road, and you're going to turn <laughs> left by the old oak tree with the honeybee hive hanging over the road. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Not the first gravel road, but the second not, gravel road on your left. Not not the gravel road with a bunch of grasshoppers. If you get there, you're going <laughs> damn too far. <laughs> but when you see that honeybee hive hanging over the road, that's when you know where to turn left. Oh, that's and, great. Um, that's great. So we, we finally get back to the campsite, and we're like, man, dude, I'm I, I, Brendan is probably just so long. He, he calls somebody, either me or he you. He called his phone. From like the campsite That's right. clubhouse. That's right. And, and you answered. Yeah, yeah. And we found him. And, and we found him. Had some brats. Enjoyed. And then we spent. Yeah, we spent the whole time. evening with my family. Yeah. And there's some characters. Mm-hmm. They were a lot of fun. They were there. They were a whole lot of fun. And we survived the insane float trip. We survived the insane float trip. Yep. And Caleb was passed out in the back of That's the truck. That's a doozy, yep. man. It was that ridiculous. That is a doozy. Dude, that was one hell of a time. And we were coming back, and uh, it was so late at night. Everybody was so tired. This dude was so hyped up. He was, like, playing the drums, like, on the seat. My girlfriend was trying to sleep. I was trying to go out. And he was trying to go Where out go? after that. I was like, man. <laughs> I was like, this dude. This I didn't dude. go out. I think I got ice cream. <laughs> Went to sleep very early. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that's the float trip from hell. Yep, and there it uh, is. if I had to go do it all over again, I don't know. I probably would. I think I, w- I think I would. Yeah, I, I think I w- that shit was fun as hell. But I'd leave Cass. It's a good at ass home. story. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's probably a good idea. <laughs> it, oh, I'm just imagining her this entire time. Just yes, that's. I mean, that's accurate. Yeah, she was not doing good. Mm-hmm. She had a pretty good attitude though. Yeah, she did. 
Just Hannah picked a good one. Just, just got a imagine good attitude. a pretty little girl that's just cold and insanely pissed off at her boyfriend, <laughs> and that's pretty much Cass at that moment. <laughs> Shout out Cassie. Shout, Shout out Cassie. Shout out to Shout Cassie. Out Cass. I love you, babe. All and 125 uh, pounds of her, eh? There you go. And uh, <laughs> so, yeah, dude, that's that one. And what a crazy time. But, you know, at the end of the day, it uh, it gives us a story to tell, and it definitely brought us closer, bro. So, you know, I I uh, I think I th- I, I'm trying to be thankful for Work to where I be, where I can. Yeah, absolutely. Some of time. the most fucked up things bring the best stories. Isn't that a fact? As you right. guys know, like Keenan's a good example in my life, mm-hmm. but we don't have to go down that rabbit have hole. Have you t- have you told that story on the pod before? I have for the first time, very recently. Yeah, really. Very recently, yeah. That's. I didn't want to talk story. about it until it was kind of all settled. For sure. Mm-hmm. I actually know the guys that live in that house now. Do you really? So it's it's a buddy that that goes to my church. Uh, Are they pretty cool Sonny. dudes? Sonny lives in, in his old house. No way. Do you want to plug this one in as well? Are they pretty cool guys? Yeah, they're awesome dudes. 604 East Grand? Yeah, really just amazing dudes. Yeah, we got on TMZ. Big I don't, deal. yeah. That's you guys were on TMZ? I actually didn't we know that. TMZ, yeah. Because I mean, Doriel Green Beckham was involved in like the entire process. That's crazy. And yeah, yeah. I'd love to see that clip. I wonder if Keenan ratted. I don't know. That's something that's still like, I just don't know. I don't know. Never will. That's crazy. But yeah, so I took him home from, uh, there was like a church pop-up event. Like a get together one night, and I give him a ride home. My and buddy you're like, me. no fucking way. And he's like, yeah, pull in right here, this gravel road, and then and then it's the first house on the left. And I was like, oh, oh you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> and pull up, and I was like, bro, do you know what happened here? And he had no idea. No they had way. no idea. He had no idea. Oh. So I, I broke it down, gave oh. him the deets, and he was like, no way, bro, that's so crazy. Just like totally <laughs> blew his mind. Me and Trud um, want to knock on their doors. Would they be cool about it? Like, uh, we just want to knock yeah. on their door and be like, "Hey, we lived here last year. Listen, what happened?" Yeah, for sure. Yeah, they would love that. Sonny's really? like the most friendly guy. Very, very approachable. They okay, would, absolutely. They would love that. I, again, I don't know the other three guys super well, but um, I've heard great things about all of them. So, I, I I trust your judgment on somebody, and if he's living with people, they're probably cool. For sure. They're 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 probably not doing what Keenan was doing. Yeah, true, true. I can promise you that. <laughs> They're heavily involved in campus ministry and and all that jazz, so probably not slinging drugs out of the crib, <laughs> out, if I had to guess. Yeah, probably a good in, thing. Yeah, in, <laughs> For the best. They're in campus ministry, not campus narcotics. I just Very realized good. you got the cutting board right here. Yeah, yeah if yeah. we need some limes and the Dos Equis. Yeah. Dos Equis. You Do you guys want to talk about a nicotine addiction? Prepared. I haven't um, talked about yeah. this yet. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking okay. of, I'm going to go ahead and just rip this. Oh, yeah. Feel free. <laughs> yeah, I will man. say nicotine is the first thing. Maybe working out. I don't know if I consider working out like an addiction. That's good. I, what, I mean, what what is the definition of addiction? If you – like I feel some sense it of dependency on working out. Like I feel, I feel somewhat dependent on endorphins. Mm-hmm. You know, like if I'm not working out at least four times a week, I don't feel right no, like in the I'm, head. I I'm don't in feel. The same, I'm in the same boat. You know, I don't. Mm-hmm. So I I know where you're coming from. Um, I have a very addictive personality, and for a while same. I said I'm addicted to working out, but I think addiction is when you reach the the negative point where you're doing too much of something. So great and, point. And great I do point. know people who work out too much, and that goes with their eating habits as well. So if you're not eating enough and you're working out, you know, three to four hours a day to try to get skinny or try or you're obsessed with your self image, I think it could definitely be negative. Mm -hmm. But if you are dedicated to working out every day and bettering yourself and you do it and you feel good every day, I don't know if that's an addiction. I think it's just a healthy habit. Mm -hmm. Good point. Yeah. So what about this? Like my intentions, whenever I go working out, I'd say roughly half the reason, I don't know, spitball but maybe half the reason of why i like to work out so much is because of the endorphin rush like i feel mm-hmm. good the rest of the day i agree i feel a lot better the rest then of the I day. Would say, then i would say and even the following day i would Absolutely. say i would say that working out becomes an addiction when it becomes vain you know when when working when you're solely working out just to either look a certain way 
you know, or to Ooh. or to prove to somebody that you are, or to show to the world that you're, you know, that you're working out, working out. Like I mean, I I know guys, you know, I've I've known guys. I've 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 been working out, you know, for four or five years, you know, kind of on and off, you know, different periods of consistency. But I mean, I I I know guys that solely work out for the purpose of looking the certain way, and I think, and I've been there myself. And I think when when working out becomes it it becomes this goal to achieve, you know, the perfect body, the perfect body, or it when it when it becomes vanity, when you're working out for vanity, that's when it becomes a negative. That's when it becomes an addiction and mm. a, a neg like at, at at least for guys. Now for girls, I think it's more so to get skinny. You know, to be able to fit in those jeans that you want to, it's or about you getting know, thick with it, boy. Right, right, Getting that booty, right, right. that right. booty, right. But you know, for for guys at least, I can't speak for girls. I'm not a girl, but you know, for guys, it when it becomes to that when it reaches that vain point, that's that's when and and like and I've been there to where like I was working out six days a week, you know. But if I worked out five days a week. I didn't feel right. Like I, like I was, I, I was fucked up in the head. I was like, man, dude, I'm missing. Like, I mean, I missed that one. My day abs aren't gonna look good tomorrow. My, my abs aren't gonna look good tomorrow. <laughs> like, I'm not gonna have that lactic pump tomorrow. You know, like that's. I've been there. That's, I've been there. That's when it become. That's when Certainly. it's reached a point to where it's no longer, it's it's no longer healthy. It's when it it's becomes just, an obsession. It's just feeding your obsession with right. how you look. Right. So going back, Caleb, like like you were saying, the obsessive personality. Did you, like my experience with fitness, like. Lifting specifically, because I grew up playing soccer, so like I had the whole cardio thing down. But with with lifting specifically, I really dove into it a particular year of high school, and I I got really obsessed to the point where it was unhealthy, and then I chilled. Does that make sense? So I got I got really obsessed, and I actually like gained a lot of muscle, and I got a lot of results. But it was unhealthy, like my lifestyle, like how much I was obsessing over the thoughts of it. Thinking about it all the time. I'd be sitting in class, like writing up my workouts. And it was just, and I noticed my sense of humor started to go. But I've slowly, I was like, okay, this is a problem. I identified it as a problem. And now I just do it consistently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I just, I just make sure, like my whole philosophy with it now is just get in. Like if you map out your day and try to fit a workout in not every day you can right but the days that you can make sure you have the discipline to show up mm -hmm. go hard for sure and even if it's even if i'm in there i don't know some days i might go only 20 minutes but like i'm i'd rather do that than nothing mm -hmm. but i i don't know i don't i feel like it's a lot healthier now do you guys right. feel like that obsessive side is good so you can like go that extreme and then kind of like come down or i feel like it helps to get there you know, like if you get to that obsessive point and then you but you have to realize that like like you need to hit that almost rock bottom, you know, and that comes with anything. Like if you have an addictive personality like I do, like, you know, you'll get really addicted to something. You'll start doing it so much. You'll start doing it so much. And then, you know, like and, and you think it's good for you, but then it reaches that point to where you realize, holy shit. This is not that good for me, and it's I'm dictating my life. my life. And it's right. dictating my life. It's taking control. Yeah, and it's. I mean, working out has addictive properties. There's endorphins released. Scientifically, you can absolutely get addicted to working out mm -hmm. and become obsessed and think about it all the time. Um, and I've been there. Honestly, I go in stages. I'll have times where it's on my mind all the time, I'm just trying to get in the gym and work on my body, self betterment. You know, I want to feel better, but. Um, yeah, it's interesting finding that balance of when is it dedication and when is it taking too far mm -hmm. and just becoming obsessed. Absolutely. Yeah. When is it taking control of my life? You know, because I've, I've, I don't know about you guys, but I've gotten to that point to where, like, if I didn't work out, if, you know, if I went a day without working out, like, I felt like shit. I was like, man, I'm going to lose, I'm going to lose all my gains. Like, I'm I would shame like myself. I had a I problem with, like, shaming mm -hmm. myself. I'd be like, you piece of shit. You didn't right. work out yesterday. It's like, yeah, I'm here today, but, like, fuck you. You didn't go yesterday. Right, right. And like, way too intense with your, like, self-talk. And that's when it say. becomes unhealthy. And also, when you start affiliating yourself with it, like, when it starts defining who you are and who you hang out with, and, like, when you I, – I, I've known some friends, you know, that have gotten to that point to where they don't even want to be around – 
overweight people. They don't even want to be affiliated with people that don't work out because they like they they f- either, I, don't, I don't I don't know if they feel shitty about themselves or they just don't want to be affiliated with they, they like they don't want to be seen if they're not like minded then they're inferior they're not, or yeah, something yeah yeah who are we gonna talk about if we're not talking about our our squat PRs bro it's a good point yeah, yeah. I don't what what else is there right I mean I don't know <laughs> oh there's there's, uh, there's also there's chest chest, chest. Oh, yeah I I always forget about that one mm-hmm. yep yep yep. Never been a strong suit of mine, but yeah, I feel. But Bicep yeah. curls as well, and bro. Oh, there you you go. were just doing titty dances earlier. What are you talking <laughs> about? Oh, ooh, ooh, daddy's oh. home. <laughs> daddy's home. So let's let's uh, let's backtrack. Do you think you're hooked on the on oh, the yeah. enjoy? N- yeah, Nick. On the enjoy. Yeah. No, I'm definitely hooked. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Definitely addicted, and I hit it multiple times a day, and I I hit it more than most people that own vapes probably do like multiple times eh. a day like m- most of the day mm-hmm. if i have it i but what i noticed is i went home to st louis i intentionally left it at home didn't think about it once mm-hmm. hmm. and then change the scenery exactly and then i drove i drove down back to springfield and i knew i was going back home and it's not like it was the only thing on my mind it probably on the three and a half hour car ride it probably crossed my mind like five six times thinking about it mm-hmm. car rides are hard yeah, they right? are. Absolutely. They are. It's that moment of solitude. Uh-huh. And it's the accessibility. Like, if you make it accessible to you, like, if I just leave this thing right here, then I'm going to hit it. But if I leave this thing over in, like, a corner in the room, or I leave it o- I, leave, I, I leave it out in my car when I when I go to work, then I don't think about it. But I think if I accessibility have it in my, is everything. But if I have it in my pocket, y- you already know I'm going to hit it. Absolutely. Because it's accessible. And I don't even get a buzz that much anymore. That's the wildest part about it. It's it's so associated in your mind that I think what I the conclusion I've come to is you're like seeping you're seeking a dopamine sense of comfort or something like that. Mm-hmm. You're you're seeking that buzz. It and definitely relaxes it's very you. Comforting it something does. about it. It does. It's it's twitch. It's mm-hmm. it's like weird twitch muscles that for some reason when you hit it and you exhale. It calms you. There's something about it, absolutely. But then there's the fucking nicotine in it that's right. actually addicting that your brain right. is is craving, right. and you can't help it. Right. And now let's see what you guys think about this. Kids are dying all mm-hmm. over the all over the country. Mm-hmm. I've heard that was those uh, those marijuana yeah. cartridges, those wax cartridges. So and then people are putting fentanyl in there. Is that true? No, no, no. So, uh, so if people are doing that, they're for sure dying. I can tell you that much. Mm-hmm. Um, I think well, you're my, saying my the theory fentanyl. is my theory is big tobacco is trying to cover up some of these things. So Altria actually purchased Juul for thirteen billion dollars. A year, two years ago, or something. And two dudes what from, is from Altria? Stanford. Altria is a tobacco company. Uh, okay, okay. Um, they made Marlboros, Marlboro Reds, most popular cigarette of all time is is Altria. I don't know all their brands, but uh, biggest tobacco company in the U.S. in the world actually. And yeah, so two dudes from Stanford started Juul, sold it to Altria. I don't know how many years later for thirteen billion dollars. Wow. Um, Studs. Yeah, I guess so, except people are dying now. Yeah, not so much. And they just marked down the value of Juul, the subsidiary of Altria, $4.5 billion. So they marked down more than a third, yeah, more than a third of the company due to the regulations that are now being passed Mm -hmm. and expected legislation changes based on vaping because people are dying. Like they're getting rid of flavored pods. That's going to kill Juul. That's gonna kill you because I don't know if you guys have ever had like hit the natural tobacco pod. It tastes like shit. Yeah, it's disgusting. You know, right? You know, so it's people like, I mean, are so hooked on Juul that even when they take mango off the market, they'll take the tobacco. Mm-hmm. I watched my, my it happened to my brother. He was a mango mango pod guy, mm-hmm. and they took mango away, and he just started buying tobacco and menthol. And he yep. he just made do. He's just like, yeah, it's fine. Just made do. It's fine. I just want to hit something. Right. Right. And there, it's it's been a while. It's crazy. I thought that they would need more research. Like cigarettes took people years to figure out how bad they were for you, right? Because you don't develop cancer for like 20, 30 years after smoking these things. But Juul, it's only been two or three years since they've been around, and people are already dying mm-hmm. because of the effect it has on your lungs right. and your health. 
because of the cloud that it leaves in your lungs. It's unbelievable. And people are just now starting to catch on. Mm -hmm. And I think it's going to go away mm -hmm. because people are actually dying. So mm -hmm. buddy showed me a Snapchat today. A friend of his brother is in the hospital. The doctors don't know what to do because they still don't know what to do with these vaping related sicknesses. Mm -hmm. They don't know what causes them. They don't know. I mean, well, they, they just know don't know how to treat them, it. But yeah, they don't know how to treat it. Right. Well, no, I, I was actually watching a watching an art or re reading an article that said they don't. I mean, with a large majority of these vaping deaths, they don't know the real, the true root cause behind what's in these PVVG juices that we're <laughs> inhaling. That it's not the nick. It's 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 not the, it's not it's the, the chemicals. It's it's something else in it that's right. The body, the human body, is not meant to inhale it. Right. At freaking nine pods a week for right. three years, right. your body's not going to take that well. Right. Now, now I will say, you know, like when, whenever you listen to like you know, Snapchat, you know, or YouTube videos, or you see something on the news and they talk about formaldehyde. Oh, formaldehyde's like the killer in these. That's I don't, bullshit. I don't fuck with formaldehyde. It's bullshit because, yeah. but. Here's the thing. It's not always bullshit, but in but it a lot of these vapes they utilize these oh what the hell are these things called? Like the the damn uh what you know, what coils is the word that I'm looking for. They utilize these coils. And formaldehyde only occurs whenever you're burning those vape juices at an extremely high temperature but these coils are actually kind of keeping that you know if if the coil is a clean coil and it's not burnt then it won't ever reach that temperature but it's when that coil gets burnt is when it allows it to burn at that really really high temp because it's not filtering it right it's not keeping it un okay. un under control so if you're to, if, if you have a real my my biggest piece of advice is that that's why if you have a burnt coil and you hit your it tastes burnt because it's burning at a way too high temp temperature yeah, yeah so yeah. my biggest piece of advice is if you're going to vape then keep your coils new keep your coils clean and don't hit them whenever like as soon as it, as soon as they start to taste burnt change it because when that coil gets burnt real burnt that's when you start getting some of the formaldehyde production you know uh le leaking into your lungs for, for, uh, from these things and so okay that's where the whole formaldehyde myth came from um, but if you if you have, I've always if heard diacetyl, that that's like too, the big problem. With I don't popcorn lung or yeah. something related to that mm -hmm. is they put this stuff in popcorn, which is why it's called popcorn lung. Mm -hmm. And if you inhale it, then it's a real problem. But if you eat it and it's in like the butter of popcorn, mm -hmm. yeah, then it's no big deal. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. So I mean, it's super dangerous. It's incredibly addicting. People it's are hooked. I mean, addictive. it's crazy. I think it started in high schools. Definitely. My br That's like, how I started. My, yeah, my high school that my br – like, I had already graduated. I was already in college, and my brother started smoking. His friends started smoking. People were getting people were getting suspended from school before I saw a jewel on campus at Missouri State. Uh -huh. And then, I mean, you look around. You walk into a party, 50, 60, 70% of the people in there are ripping yeah, jewels. shit, dude. It's or some sort of vape. Some sort of vape. That's when I got yeah. into it was college at parties. Mm -hmm. And you're mm -hmm. like, well, what are these things? And then you suck it in once and you're like, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. That's great. This. That feels great. This yes, this nicotine rush crazy. with the alcohol. Yeah. It's like, oh, the combo. Yeah, it's oh whenever my you're, God. It's when you're, when you're, it's like. We sound it's addicted like, right, like, right now. <laughs> <laughs> Something like feeds. <sighs> <sighs> but we just being hey, real, bro, though. Let me hit your jewel. Yeah, it's like I mean, well, here you Please. go. Girl. If you want to hit that thing, it's all you. But not, not. You know, I'm just feeding the beast. But it's not e like. I feel like with that, whenever, like, like, this. whenever you get drunk, yeah, there's I'll, something I'll, about being drunk. It's like it's like the people that only smoke cigs whenever they're drunk. There's something. There's something about that mix. But I also will say, if when it, like if you get high and hit it too. It's also a game changer. Yeah. So yeah. So it's it, it kind of goes both ways. It's like you know it's 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 the double whammy. I you think know. it's just when your decision making is impaired, you just don't care as much. Yeah, you just don't. Give because up. when you're sober, you kind of think about the health mm -hmm. effects. When you've had something to drink, 
you don't care. One, you don't care. Mm. Two, you hit a jewel in boogie when you're nine shots deep (laughs) and the room starts spinning. Damn. Damn. What a time. (laughs) Wow. And you don't have to go outside. That's right. That's right. That's a big thing, too. So I am hooked on chewing tobacco, (laughs) which is a whole (laughs) nother. Wow. Wow. See, exhibit A. (laughs) Come on. Don't vape. Um, I decided today I'm quitting. Quitting dipping. I've decided that I'm quitting on, I think, four other occasions. You're going to quit the dippy poo. I'm going to quit the dippy poo. Damn. It's tough. It's it's a tough game. I mean, addiction is real. You th- literally think about it. Like, it's habitual, too. So, like, if every time you get in your car, you rip your jewel, and then you s- try to quit, <laughs> every time you get in your car, you're going to think about ripping the jewel. Mm-hmm. Same thing with chew. Every time I leave the gym, I drink my protein shake, and then I throw in a dip, let my protein shake hit, and then make some food. Mm-hmm. So now every protein shake I have, I'm like, right. dip sounds good. Right. Dip sounds good. Right. So it's crazy how habitual that stuff is. But, if, I mean, it takes, what, 90 days to build new habits? I think that's what they say. Yeah. They say 90 days. So if I can quit this shit for 90 days, maybe start chewing some Nicorette. Oh no! See, dude, have you have you ever chewed that shit? No, tell me about it. Okay, so I actually tried to quit vaping. I actually tr- and, and I was good for about two weeks. And this is this is how if to anyone that's trying to quit vaping, I will say don't hang out with us. Well, not, yeah, <laughs> we won't help you. Number one, don't <laughs> hang out with us. But number two, if you are trying to quit vaping and you're on something. Number one, get off the fucking jewel. The jewel is dead because all of the – they don't make any other option in juices besides the 50 mg. So you're going to get – I mean, that's – I mean, when you look – Isn't you, it five? Or five, 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 50, whatever, you know, or five. A high it's, dose, it's, high it's, dose. It's five mg, 50 ml, what, something something like that. Something. Anyway, um, I'm just going to refer to it as 50 because it's going to make a lot more sense with the story that I'm about to tell. But so I, I got off that jewel, and then I went to the Sarn Drop. And then that broke. And then I went to this thing, the Trinity Alpha. They actually gave it to me for free, which really just kind of enabled me. Another um, sponsor as we talk about how bad vaping is. This podcast brought to you by <laughs> Jewel. <laughs> actually, Blue Vapor. And <laughs> <laughs> the logo right here. Logo right here. <laughs> no, dude. Shout out to Blue Vapor, though. Those guys are chill as fuck. I love your lounge. Anyway. But um, don't go there because don't you go will there die. Because they will give you some crazy cool shit and you will be hooked on Nick. <laughs> <laughs> It's true. Uh, um, anyway, so what I did to get off of these was every time I bought juice, I I because when I s- was on the jewel, I was like, I got I got to get off the jewel because I I want to go down in the in nicotine. So in order to do that, I needed to have something that was refillable, so where I could buy different types of juices. So every time that I bought juice, I went down either five or ten mg's in nick. So then I bought. 40s, then I bought 35s, then I bought 30s, 25s, 20s, 15s, all, all the way down to 3. I got all the way down to 3 to where it was barely anything. Like those ones, you, like, you know, 3, 6, and 9 is usually what you see in those vapes that just puff like those monster ass clouds. Yeah, absolutely. You know, like, I mean, I fu- number one, I hate that shit. Like, if you have one of those, bro, like, come on. Dude, Vape like, squad? Like, yeah. Like Not the about va- that? Now, now, if you can do the ones cool that look tricks, like the back of a pistol. Yeah, they're basically grenades that you <laughs> carry around in your pocket. Yeah, those. You know, the ones that also blow up. You have to and buy a briefcase to leg. carry it around in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, those. So I did that, and that was actually working. Like, and and it worked really well. But it's still, whenever I like got to three, and then I finished that bottle of juice, and I was like, all right, I'm done. I can't go any lower. Dude, I'm I'm not kidding you. Within like within three days, I mean the withdrawal just from being on just from from hitting nicotine for so long. Like the I, I'd say the first three days was by far the worst. Like my mood totally changed. It was it, it turned me into something that I wasn't satisfied being that I didn't want to be. It it, mm. it, it turned me into like I mean I I couldn't get like I was just con- like after that three days. Like all I could, like my, it was, I could taste it in my mouth. Like my mouth was, it's, it's those receptors in your, in your brain that get so used to nicotine. Yeah. Yeah. Being filled by, and without that, like it, it's crazy. If, if you ever try and stop, like, I mean, three to four days after that, I mean, I, I was re- I was feeling the withdrawals from that 
hard. I wasn't myself. Do you think it's the I association was, of sucking in and associating yeah, that with pleasure? Exactly. Because because I tried to get on Nicorette gum. Well, number one, Nicorette gum is expensive as shit, so I went to the Equate brand. Shout out to Walmart. Um, <sighs> But it tasted like ass, dude. It was so nasty. And I just couldn't keep Is it worth your life, Landon? I'm I'm going to quit this someday Man, soon. And I'm I, going to and I'm going to deal with who I become for the next two weeks. And so then you we you slowly like weed yourself off. I this. slowly What are your thoughts on going off. cold turkey then? Don't do that. It's not gonna work. Don't do that. Really? Don't don't go from You're fifty. Break. Don't go from fifty to no to zero because you will break. I think you it's gotta break. be a process. Because I for really me, do. what what caused me to break? And dude, I'll be hundred percent honest. I haven't bought juice in three months. Low key been bumming up bumming it off a of buddy, but um, <laughs> <laughs> that's not helpful, buddy. And uh, yeah, not <laughs> helpful either. But you know. Um, and yeah, dude, I'm it's it's my freaking like I'm not I don't have very many weaknesses, but I guess like I've just been doing this for so long that it almost be and and I, and I mean someday within the next actually couple of weeks, I'm going to quit cold turkey and I'm just going to have to deal with who I am for like 2 weeks and then slowly work back into it. Mm. You know, just like work back into not obviously not not, not nicotine, but you know, doing something else. You know, Loki that's why I bought that dab rig. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> you know, Solid. My, it, it, Replacing it, it one addiction ha- with another. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I wouldn't say I wouldn't say it's addictive, but yeah, who knows? Arguable. Know. But one substance with another substance. I will say, like, whenever I hit that dab, like, I don't like if I don't have this thing accessible, I don't even think about it. Totally, totally takes my mind off of it. And so, like, I mean, one of these, like, n- in the next couple weeks, I'm just gonna quit cold turkey. I'm just gonna like, I'm gonna throw this thing in a lake. I'm not even. I'm not even gonna look back. You should throw it in my front yard. Or in, or in Caleb's front yard. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like you're lost in the juice, bro. Lost in the sauce? Yeah. We should talk about that. Lost in the sauce. You ever been lost in the sauce at the uh, the Taco Bell? I don't believe I have. So I, believe I, I, have. I, have to, I have to explain. lost in the sauce. Do you guys explain. care if I let take a piss real quick? Let Caleb explain. Oh, oh, dude, I could pee too. What if we just peed in these beer bottles? There you go. I wouldn't say no we could to do that. Do it on the pod. I wouldn't say no to that. We could make it this like thing, a, I mean, look at it. Like it's a how-to video. <laughs> like here's it's literally how you like waste up. Waste bottle. It's waste up. Wait, uh, no, you can, you can So, see. what if me and Jordan go pee and we leave Landon here to entertain the viewers? I have full trust in Landon entertaining. <laughs> We're gonna come you back and Landon's just gonna be ripping a giant dab. <laughs> 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 And this is how it's I done. Check out okay. the sport bong. I can get this thing rolling if you guys want me to. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, no, no, no. No, no, no. I might, um, I might have to You want to go it, first? Uh, sure. You're closest to the door. Sure. I'll All stay right. down here, and then we'll just we'll switch off. Okay. That's okay. Cool. I'll be cool. quick. Cool. I mean, okay. I can just tell stories while you guys are gone, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I got tons of stories. You're talking to Landon, bro. That's a good point. That's a good point. I got point. stories on stories on stories, dude. You want to hear the one time about how I almost shot this dude in my front yard back in St. Louis? Oh, Jesus Christ. Yes, I do. Okay, well, this is when I was a little kid. Well, not little kid. I want to say I was probably like 6th or 7th grade, but... I remember I got dropped that? off That's by like the 13, bus. 14, something like that. Yeah, probably. Yeah, let's see. No, you're 12 and... Sixth grade. Are you 12 and sixth grade Yeah, you turned 13? 12 and sixth grade and 13 and seventh. Something like that. Obviously depends on when your birthday is. But anyway, around that age, got dropped off by the bus, was walking home, kind of like walked down my street a little, you know, probably about four houses down. Had my house in sight, you know, kind of kept walking. Now my house is getting closer, but I hear this sub, this like, you know, like, have you ever heard, like, you're kind of walking in a quiet area, but you hear subwoofers in a car? Like, you can hear it just beating down just the, the block. Yeah, the base. Just the base. Let's of get it. closer. Just the base. And, ge- and, and it's getting closer. Just, just. I mean, just that, just that kind of low. That was a really rumble, good base, by the way. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. And so. I heard that. I didn't really think much of it, you know, because whatever, you know, my, my middle school is right next to the high school. I thought it was just some high school or, you know, driving home from school, whatever. But I get right in my front yard and this black Hummer pulls in, pulls onto my street and is going like two miles an hour. I mean, just rolling down and it's all blacked out. I mean, all blacked out on like 24 inch rims something ridiculous you know this bass heavy 
have and I like kind of look back, you know, and um and I see them and they just stop right in front of my house. And they, they clearly the wi- see you. The windows roll down. Not all the way, but just kind of cracked. And smoke's coming out of the car. And I was like, and as a, as like a 7th grade kid, you know, you're kind of like low key sketched out, you know, so I I I, ru- I run inside. And the first thing I grab is my AR-15. Not, I don't know why I had an AR-15 in seventh grade, but you know, our, our, our family, our family Jeez, comes that's what from Caleb a long, returns to. Our family comes from a long line I of love guns. This. Um, and so the first thing I go downstairs is I grab that. I had a loaded mag. I loaded that up because I thought they were gonna c- try and come in the house. But I remember seeing, I and I thought, and I don't, I don't, I don't want to say this with like complete certainty, but I could have sworn I had been, and I had been on a sh- on a shooting team for a while now, and I had been, sh- I mean, I've been shooting guns my entire life, but I swore I saw gun barrels through the crack of that window as as smoke was was kind of coming out, and I saw like the tip, the top of some, and it was he was wearing like a bandana, and um, so I g- and I go get that. AR-15. I I put the mag in it. I go back upstairs, and if you go in our if if you're in our house, you know, like our dining room is kind of right by the front door, and it's all glass windows, you know, so you can totally see the front yard, and you can see that across the street to the neighbor's house. Well, they're still parked out in front of my house. The car's running, smoke's still coming out, you know. Even like when I'm you're I, inside. Even when I'm inside, I've been inside for like a good five minutes. So I have that gun, dude. I barricade the door. I, I I tip over the couch, and I'm literally I lock all the doors. I close all the blinds, and but I leave the front door open. I lock the back door, the garage door, the side door. You know, wait, all like the door the wide open? No, I know. No, 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 not not wide, not wide open. I left one of the blinds kind of cracked so I could see if they got out of the car. And I put and I tip the couch over. And this is when I'm in seventh grade. So strategic. And I and I I mean it was like home, it was some home alone shit. But instead of a BB gun, I'm using a 223. You know, <laughs> five five six NATO round. You know, I'm ready to fuck somebody up. Like I'm I'm like, dude, these guys get out of their car and come up to my house and they have a, I even sense some sketchiness or some guns and they try and come into our house. I'm gonna dump 30 rounds into the first dude that walks into my fucking house. You know, I was I was in seventh grade with that kind of mindset. I was just like, I'm I'm scared. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't give a fuck who I'm going to shoot every one of the motherfuckers that gets out of that car, you know, so I'm just barricaded. They kind of like I don't know if they saw me, but nobody got out. They just stood there. Base is still hitting, just hitting, you know, and I'm just like, man, this is strange. Like it's rattling. the It's rattling the wine glasses in my kitchen. You know, like, I mean, it's 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 heavy. It's kind of intense. Dude. I'm oh. like, man, I'm going to blast my, one of these motherfuckers like they if one dude gets out of that car, dude, the, the safety's coming off. You know, I'm not going to let a round rip until he gets in my front yard, but I'll shoot a warning shot well before he gets to my front door. You know, but I was like, I I locked all the doors and all the windows, so the only entrance, they had an open entrance to my front door, and they were about to be met with some lead real quick. But they didn't get out of the car, and they just slowly drove off. And I was like, that's really bizarre. Man, dude, I was ready to dump somebody's ass dude I, I i was i was to the point there where i was like man one dude gets out of that car it's game on like it's it is game i and and, and you also have to keep in mind like when i was in middle school i was nothing like i like i look now i was real skinny when i graduated eighth grade i was 94 pounds i was super wow. skinny yeah i was short i was only like maybe maybe five foot that's I was really smaller small. than wow. everybody in my grade. I was shorter. I was skinnier. You know, I kind of got you know I got I got picked on a lot in middle school, but I'm not gonna go down that. You know, I'm not I'm not gonna turn this into no set. You know, it's fucking sob story. But it really, you know, yeah, like how about you, be, you quit being a bitch, Landon? Yeah, <laughs> damn it. You know, like looking like Ridiculous. looking back <laughs> on it, looking back on it, I'm glad I got picked on in middle school. I'm glad I got shoved in lockers because that made me the person that I am today. And if I see anybody getting bullied, I'm going to beat their ass, That's dude. really surprising to me. That's really surprising to me. You know, and it really shaped the person that I kind of became. Um, it also, you know, shaped, you know, it also kind of turned me into the person that got me in trouble, too. So, you know, it, it had its pros and cons. But anyway, 
at that point, you know, like, I mean, I was real, I, I was an easy target for somebody, you know, if they, if they wanted to kidnap somebody for ransom, you know, maybe if they wanted to rob the house, like they saw the small little kid going in, they'd probably drive, driven past our neighborhood multiple times, knew what time my parents got home. Like they knew if they wanted to rob the crib, they could real easily. And, um, but what they didn't know. Cause I was packing some serious heat. And Daddy I was, had an AR-15. And, yeah. I was, and I was ready to let it dump. But, you know, they but they didn't get out of the car. I don't know. Like, an, I mean, I guess just another thing, you know, I mean, whether they had guns or not, dude, like I, that was one of the most like surreal moments of my life where I was like, dude, like that was one of the only times I've ever come close to shooting a gun in my house at somebody coming in. You know, I was like, were yeah, you home I mean, alone? Home alone. Yeah, this well, is literally home, home, alone, home Alone, the movie, except he has Real an guns. AR-15. Not BB guns. And Legos. Yeah. Did, I, I didn't use many Legos. Tic Tacs and shit. I was going to use some, sp- you know. I th- This is also the kid that I was, dude. Like, I mean, I wasn't the kid that really played much sports. Like, I was the kid that, like, would go out in the woods for, like, three days and just live in the woods and eat squirrels, rabbits, like, raw. whatever I could Are shoot. Are you joking? Eat no. it raw. No, I used yeah. to do it all the time. Like You'd shoot it and skin it and grandparents cook house. it. They, they lived on like eighty five acres. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't like, cook when it. I was like my dad didn't want me playing football because I was t- I was too small. I was like too skinny. But so like I kind of found enjoyment doing other things. I'd make spears, bow and arrows, you name it, dude. Like I would make stuff out of. I mean, I was kind of that kid, that weird kid that had no friends, but just kind of like knew like if if it came down to it, could survive probably six months on his own this is the the guy you want to be with in the apocalypse yeah exactly yeah Yeah. (laughs) that i was a weird little motherfucker but you know like that's just what i that's that's just that's just what i was but like a hunter gatherer essentially modern civilization that's right essentially that's what i like to do like it was thoroughly enjoyable for me i made a stick fort out at my and i call this a stick i made a lot of stick forts in my day i made some stick forts dude good times good times i wonder who had the best stick fort Dude, I'll show you pictures I think of Landon, mine. The way he's talking about himself. I don't know. Well, this I had a pretty good stick fort. <laughs> Did yours have three bedrooms, a living room, a fireplace, and a running and a functional bathroom? <laughs> <clears throat> All right, you can you can have this one. I spent, I spent three, dude. I spent three years building Jesus. this thing. And if you ever come out to my grandparents' old place, they sold that land. It's still out there. It's still standing, and it looks like the same as it did ten years ago. Did you have a urinal, fucking? It's nailed to the wall or something in there. There was, there was a dude. I literally like fashioned this. So there was a slope where I built this thing down to a spring-fed creek, and I literally, I literally carved out with a hatchet and with some, with some chisels, like this little, this, this little wood kind of. I, I used a couple pieces of bamboo too that were in the uh, koi pond, and I literally like this, this little track urinal thing, so I could literally pee in my stick fort. Right out, it and was it would take in it my right bedroom, down to the it creek. would take it right down to the creek. Right down <laughs> to the creek. <laughs> That's incredible. No, so do yeah, dude. Literally, and I have That's pictures great. too. If you ever want to, sh- if you ever want to see them, it was, yeah, it was legit. Yeah, yeah, I built it with, great. I built it with my little cousin. I'm not, I'm not fucking with you. It's hilarious. Wow. My stick fort had a closet door for a roof. That's awesome. Had a fireplace oh, inside of it. Had a little hole in the ground for storage where I stored my walnuts and my, my, uh, my, walnuts. my crab apples. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> It was pretty cool. It was warm in the winter oh. when it would snow. You could pack the snow around the outside oh, yeah. and then light the fire oh, inside. Oh. It's a, it's it would get igloo, warm. Man. Yeah. Okay. Now that low key though, that's pretty legit. I'm not gonna lie. Like yeah, I'm not man. gonna knock your stick you guys, for it at all. That's legit. Thank you. Wait, thank you guys you. both had. Uh, it means a lot to me. Oh, camera just died. Camera just died. But um, wait, you guys both had fireplaces. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I had a fireplace. Warmth. Mine. Warmth is key. Wow. Mm-hmm. I, bu- yeah, I yeah. built it kind of like a teepee, but mine was built out of all sticks. It was sticks and vegetation. I didn't use any like prefabrication i just kind of used all just what i could find in the woods but it it was it was airtight i mean you couldn't if you were inside of it and there was a strong breeze growing you you wouldn't feel it if you were inside like the main living room and it was decent sized i mean the main living area was probably this the size of this little space right here impressive maybe maybe not as tall well done maybe like you know two like two foot less but then again i was only like what four foot fucking eight you know so i didn't need a big 10 foot i can number one i couldn't reach it but yeah, no, there's my stick fort. Fucking crazy. That's <clears throat> impressive. That's impressive. But, yeah, I spent three years building that thing and also had no friends, so you know what? Give or take. <laughs> your friend, your friends were the sticks that my comprised friend, the my, fort. <laughs> my friend was my cousin the animals. That, was, that was two <coughs> years younger than me. Some. <coughs> 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 All right, sub me out. Sub me out. I'll be right back. All right, you're subbed out. 
What do you want to talk about, Caleb? Um, I want to talk. What do we do about this camera, Jordan? Uh, it just dies, honestly. Okay. It just yeah, dies. So we just move on. I'm just going to keep discussing. I had an idea What's that? earlier for Lay what we were going to talk about. Lay it on me. But it's lost to me. I'm literally a Dos Equis and one Natty Light deep. And it's gone. And ideas are escaping me. <laughs> and it's at gone a, At a quick rate. At a quick rate. It's unbelievable. You want to do vo- you want to do like accents and voices and see what like yes scenes? let's right. see what voices we can do. Do you have any like go to impersonations? I don't have any like go to impersonations, but I can do some decent accents. What, how's what's your how's your British accent? It's a little weird when you're talking into the microphone, but it's all right. My British accent isn't that great, but my Russian accent is not bad. A Russian? I will fucking kill you. I will. F- I will fucking kill no, now. You now, if I'm trying to go, I, if I if I really want to get the Russian, then I can speak. That, I mean, I can just speak in a very deep Moscovian tone. Very deep Moscovian. Mm-hmm. I I love to drink vodka. You love to drink vodka. I, if if that's not a Russian stereotype, I don't know what is. You don't know what is. <laughs> <laughs> My Russian's it's not very good. See, how's how's your see, Irish? Ru- you got a good Irish, Irish accent? Irish. Hey, over the rainbow. There's a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. <laughs> dude, I was actually watching a video the other day on this dude that was speaking such a hard hard Irish accent. I couldn't even understand a word he was saying. But really, if I could do – all right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Question, question, question. If question. If you could speak one language – and don't say Spanish, dude, because everyone always going to say – I was going to fucking say Spanish. No way. You were going to say Spanish? Espanol. All right. Me, uh, me hablo español, señor. Well, you know, one that you need to learn is Mandarin because you're going to be over there. I am going to be in China. I am going to be in China. Tell them but about that, dude. Tell the people. Tell the people. The people dude. need so to know. You, so you're going to be in China when? Uh, so I'm, I'm leaving for China in May, mm-hmm. and then I'm returning July 4th, so it's like seven weeks total. Dude, that's crazy. Yeah, basically I'm getting paid $3,000. To go help a professor teach a class That's awesome. at Missouri State's sister school in Dalian, China. Don't know a ton of details yet. There's still quite a few months. And Jordan has pizza. What? I had pizza. Pizza, man. Somebody just came through because we're about to meet and talk about Europe. And he brought pizza. So. That's incredible. Yeah, Do right? we need to, like, cut it off soon so you can talk about Europe? I'd say, I'd say like, 15, 15 to 30 minutes, something like that. Okay. That's perfect. So I'm going to talk China. Because not everybody's here yet, so we're cool. Cool. I'm going to talk China. Don't do that. Don't do that. We don't need that here. I'm going to talk China. You're going to talk Europe. Camera is off, but. Oh, interesting. We just don't want to talk about it. it. It's up to you guys. Okay. Okay. It'll, this will this will take me like 10 so, or 15 minutes to get set up anyway. Yeah. Jordan, how was your piss, by the way? Sorry. I forgot to ask. We're leaving. We're Good. leaving. Good. Um, I was very interested in the fact that one, the light switch is outside of the bathroom. Yeah, right. And two, it's a curveball. It is a curveball. It's a design flaw, certainly. Design two, flaw. absolutely. Two, there's two spigots, one for hot, one for cold. They're not one nozzle. You know? What? what do you mean? I don't know about that. Oh, dude, no, that's just you know what I'm saying. House. There's like two nozzles. It's like. Like most sinks have two right. like spinners, but just right. one nozzle. This one has right. two nozzles, so like oh, your left no hand's way. gonna be hot and your right hand's gonna be cold, and there's just nothing you can do about that. No way, dude. Unless I guess you I like just splash never, your hands together. I kind of like moved in and just never really thought about it much. Dude, that's crazy. I've never even. Do you just seen use a one of them, like and I or do you use both? Because I use both. I feel like I and I was confused. Oh really? Yeah. I don't know what I do. It's one of those things. It's probably so habitual that yeah. like whenever I try to think about it, I don't even know what I do. I don't know what my actual habit is. Yeah. You don't know anyway, how you wash your hands. Think about it pee. next time you're washing your hands. Also think about where you place your hands on your on your tinker the next time you take a piss. You'll be surprised. I don't think where I touch you it. You don't hand. even touch it? No, I just I just pull it down. Just I touch my hang. pants the whole time. Okay. Okay. So when I'm at the gym, what I actually do is pull the bottom of my shorts out. I don't even pull it down. I do the, the same thing at the gym. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like a fucking dog. It's awesome. Dog's a great way to describe it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just kind of lean freeing. in. Just don't even have to wash your hands. You don't even touch anything but your shorts, you know? You yeah. It's 
not bad. I don't know. Some people might think that's gross. I actually had a guy yell at me one time because I left the bathroom in the gym without washing my hands. No way. Dude, grabbed the, I he love grabbed, those grabbed guys. the back of my shirt. They're just looking out said, are you for fucking you, kidding me? You're going to wash your hands or what? I was like, bro, I didn't touch my dick. And he was like, I don't care. Wash your hands. He so, called you out on that. Yeah. I was like, that's fair, man. I, I understand. And I, I'm a firm believer in you should wash your hands when you're at the gym because you're going to go touch a bunch of stuff that everyone's going to touch. Get point. But uh, I like, forgot that you're day. Like, you're like, bro, dude, calm down. I mean, low key, though, tr- it's, it is kind of true. Like, you're going to the gym. But then again, like, dude, I don't know. I'm one of those guys at the gym that, like, I don't I don't wash down I don't wipe down my seat that I've been on like I mean call me old school like I mean this is I don't either coming, I don't this is also coming from a guy that worked out in his garage for seven months while he was on house arrest so you know I mean I just didn't really give a fuck but like I guess I just kind of rubbed off I've never been one of those guys to like wa- like wipe down but I I do respect it but then at the same time I'm I, I'm like dude this damn gym dude like this gets like this let's just get it but at the same time I've also seen some very fat, nas- like just very like gross motherfuckers at the like gym. Like Fat Ange. Imagine if you saw Fat Ange. <laughs> yeah, gym. dude, I'd tell that bitch to wipe down. Her Fucking probably sitting down bitching about water. Like I don't do water. I don't do water. <laughs> I don't do hills. I, I can't I do hills. I don't do any physical activity. A stair step? Are you fucking kidding me? It's <laughs> mm. ridiculous. What about you, Caleb? Do you do you wipe down your seat? He does. Um, what? He's a, he's a good guy. You don't know me. P- dude, you think you know me, sorry, but you I, don't know I me. I almost called you Peter, <laughs> and I'm so sorry, dude. Assumptions. Caleb. Assumptions. It's me, Peter, and I wipe down the toilet seat when I poop. Because I'm a little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing. You know, if there's droplets on the toilet seat, I'm going to give it a wipe. If there's no droplets, maybe there's just some, like, I don't know, like like watermarks. I don't care. What about butt hairs? Butt hairs? I'll, I'll probably, like, honestly, I might even wipe it with my hand. Oh. I might wipe it with my hand. Oh, no. Impressive. Here, here you are talking shit on me wiping my toilet seat, and then I just flip the script and say that I'll wipe butt hairs off with my hand. How Low do you feel key. now, Landon? I feel like shit. I do it yeah. with my mouth. I definitely I misjudged this man. I blow it off. That's actually pretty intelligent. It's probably the most efficient off. way to do that. I feel like that. I probably have done that. That's funny you guys say that, though, because today I didn't check if there were droplets on the toilet seat. You sat in piss. I, I sat straight in piss, man. And how'd you feel? Uh, well, <laughs> That's what I don't my think dad it was, does. I don't think it was my right. It wasn't my right cheek. I call it was him my a right. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just fucking. Under, uh, it was my right hamstring. It, excuse me. And I was like, oh, that's so gross. That was my first thought. And then I was like. Eh, how gross is it? It's my leg. Like, I'll wash it later, and it'll... I don't know. How gross is that? It's not like it's, like, something I'm using all the time. Like, how often do you touch the bottom of your fucking... Now I'm, now I'm touching it, but how often do you touch, like, the bottom of your hamstring? I mean, yeah. Every... T- I mean, probably once a day, I'm, like, flexing and, like, caressing my hamstring. <laughs> <laughs> Now that you say that, I can relate more yeah, than I Gaines, thought I bro. could. It's like after a good leg, like I hit legs today. Nice. Got a nice pump in the back of the hammy. Feel the pulse. Feel the pump. Yeah, feel it. Absolutely. I um, feel, dude. Anyway, bro, China. China. Going to Let's China. Did it, you know dude. I'm going to China? I did not know you were going to China. So I'm going to be a graduate assistant in China. Wow. I was telling Landon, I'm leaving in May, coming back July 4th. So seven weeks, getting paid go to China and help a professor teach a class. I love how you're coming back July 4th. July 4th, back in the States, ready to celebrate our independence, be American as fuck, drink a bunch of Bud Lights, you know. That's d- awesome, dude. Light some things on fire. Wait, you're going to be back for 4th Hopefully July? not my home. Yes. Oh, I get back my. July the 4th. No way. Unless I decide to stop in Japan before I come home. I may spend an extra week. Dude, uh, okay, you almost, like, lo- I'm not trying to dump on your 4th of July parade, but at the same time, like, dude, if you get to go to Japan for a week, you should. Good point. I agree. I had a, I had a teacher from China kind of give, a professor, kind of give me the rundown. Um, I was helping her proctor an exam, so it was, like, dead silence. And I told her I'm going to China, and she got all excited and started, like, actually mapping out, like, the cities I should hit and all the stuff I should do. Unfortunately, I think I only get a single-entry visa, so I can't, like, 
in the like four weeks in like decide i want to go to japan i want to go to shanghai and fly out go to japan and then come back you have to plan it all out i have to plan it out so that when i come in maybe i stop in south korea and have a layover in south korea spend a day there and then fly into china and then on my way out have a layover in japan maybe stay two days like Apparently, they have two, three-day layovers in some of these cities where you can leave the airport and actually come back in and then fly out. Mm. So she kind of laid it out for me. She said, I have to see South Korea. She said, I have to see Japan. Mm -hmm. She said, when you're in China, go see Beijing. Beijing's amazing. She she said, it's kind of like New York City, but even crazier. I was going to say. Even crazier than New York. It's just stuffed with people. Yeah. People wearing masks, right? Because the smog is so bad. It's crazy. Yeah. And so... And I've I've been to Europe. We talked about that on your last podcast. I was fresh off the Europe trip. Good point, yeah. Um, but this, I mean, Asia is totally different. It's the the culture has spanned from a completely different part of the world, and it's just so 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 different. Um, it's almost like another planet. Yeah, you know? like Asia. Yeah. Asia is probably the most different from the United States. Maybe that's ignorant oh, totally. for me to say but no i would i would totally agree eastern culture is i mean it's totally different than western culture but dude you need to go to the forbidden city and where's that at i oh, fuck i couldn't tell you but all i know is i've watched a lot of documentaries on it dude the history in china is just it, it, i mean i don't know i'm kind of a history nerd but uh-huh. like if i got to go to china I don't know if I would do the big city thing. I would, I would go like I would go to the, I would go to South China and like hike up to those mo- those yeah, Buddhist man. monasteries. Yeah, Ooh. that'd be cool. Oh my god, dude! Like meditate with a monk. Are you kidding me? Fucking baller. That'd be cool. <laughs> I would I so do that. You think they'd allow you to do that? I don't know if they'd let you just into a mosque to just hang out with the, mo- the monks. Maybe just like cool. walk in. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't like, know. Hey, man, can I hang out with you in your in your monastery and just I would relax so, for I, a I few mean, hours? I feel like I mean I don't know. I I mean be then cool. again, I've never been to China, but worth some research for sure. Hike like ten thousand stairs up some you know some crazy ass mountains. Yeah, see some crazy ass shit and some monkeys and dude just like you know meditate out on the side of a cliff like overlooking just the South China beauty. I mean, are you kidding me? I'd so do that. Yeah. I'd break some rules to do that. It'd be cool. That'd yeah, be so, so cool. I'll keep you posted when I return. Bro. Quite I'm a ways away. Where are you going after graduation? Wait, you said you're leaving in May? I'm leaving in May back July 4th, yeah. Wait, what, what day of May? Uh, It's like a couple days after finals, so like May 14th or 15th. I forget the exact date. We'd be leaving like literally like a few days before you. And you're going to Europe? To Europe, yes. In May. Yeah. So tell me about that. Like we, you would probably be abroad the exact same amount of time, and yeah, I, I'd probably be back around July Fourth as well. And that's what you're kind of walking through tonight and deciding. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So pretty much the prime, like what I, my understanding of what we're doing now, and I'll give you guys the real quick like mm-hmm. run over of everything, is we're going from St. Louis to New York City. I have a friend out in New York, and that's just me and Megan. So it's just me and Megan for like two weeks or something like that. Um, from St. Louis to New York City. I have a friend out in New York City, and we'll be there for like two, three days, and then go from there to London, to Dublin, to Lisbon, Portugal, then go up to Bilbao, and uh, Barcelona's playing. I'm a huge Barcelona fan. Oh, Lionel Messi right behind you. There we go. Um, so I want to see their last game of the season, which happens to be on May 24th. Then down in Madrid, we'll either meet up with them at the soccer game or in Madrid on the 25th. And then I'm meeting, we're meeting up with uh, – if everybody ends up going, there's six people down for sure, three guys, three girls. And then there are – if everybody ends up going, there will be four guys, four girls. So okay. one guy and one girl are like kind of up in the air. Anyway, uh, I think they'll both end up going, though. That's just me personally. Sounds like a, a trip they don't want to miss. Yeah, right? Mm-hmm. Sounds dope. So we'll have – I mean, eight people. That'd be that'd be pretty cool. There'll be pros and cons to it for sure. Yeah, I think so. Dude, you guys gotta you, know? go to, you guys gotta go to Rome. Oh yeah, you for guys sure. Gotta go to Rome. And dude. then from Madrid over to Barcelona to Southern France to Paris to Brussels to Par- uh, Amsterdam. Uh, then I believe Munich to Berlin to Ooh, Russia. I don't think we're going to Russia now. That would be cool though. That yeah. would be interesting. I don't know if you can – can you get into Russia with a normal visa? Mm-hmm. Or do I you have to so. – really? I, so. I don't know. 
I mean, I, I have no idea. So. They don't hate us that much. Not right now. <laughs> there we go. So, I don't know. Who but then knows? go from there. I think we're going to, like, Switzerland or Austria, one of the two, as we make our way south and to Italy. And what they want to do, and this is where I'll probably split from the group and do my own thing, uh, whether somebody comes with me or not, who knows. But they all want to go to Greece. And Ooh. I would rather, which sounds sick. Like, that sounds sick as fuck. I'm Greece not be dope. putting that off at all. But I really wanted to go to Croatia. I've heard cr- great things about everybody that's been to Croatia. They're like, the, like people that have been to Europe and say they've been to four or five spots, Croatia is at the top of a lot of people's lists. Really? And um, t- to be honest, like, some of those references are girls on Tinder. But mm-hmm. anyway. Uh, that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, right. You bring it, that up. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I, like, honestly, I'm like, I, I want to go off of personal recommendation, regardless of who it is. So, like, if I see a girl on Tinder and she'll, she'll, um, I literally just put my bio on there because I, I used to get on there to like hook up. Now I pretty much get on there, I kind of just talk Europe to girl recommendations. Pretty much. That's Love my that. bio. It's like I need recommendations for Europe. That's pretty much why I'm on there anymore. But anyway, uh, a little toasty. I, I noticed that. I noticed yeah. that. I was starting to get there. But anyway, yeah, I'll probably go to Croatia, Budapest, and then um, I'm also thinking Prague. And then I want to fly to London and then Iceland as well. So Iceland would be dope on your way back. That would be sick. Yeah. Round trips from London are super cheap, man. They're like 30, 40 bucks. Dude, traveling in Europe is so cheap. You it's could take a train anywhere, plane rides, like 50 bucks to fly to the neighboring country. Like, you can get around super cheap. That's awesome. So definitely keep me in the loop with the planning on that trip. I'd love to know, like, expense-wise what it looks like to do all that. Totally. That's a ton, man. That's a ton. So how many days in each one of those places are you thinking? I don't fully agree with this. I a Part of me would almost rather see less and then spend more time in each spot. But probably what we'll end up doing is uh, I'd say about three days on average okay. for most places. I That's pretty good. Because when I went to Europe, it was three days in each city. And, yeah, it's a lot. Like, especially, some, there's so much history in Europe and all those cities. London oh is God. crazy with the amount of history that's there. But I didn't feel, like, rushed or stressed out at all. Like, three days was I – was, I was afraid you were going to say one or two days. And if that right, was the right. case, I think you'd just be stressed and rushed and just not feel comfortable the entire time. But I think three or four days in each city – is enough to kind of get the idea and then and see like you could go see 10 monuments in a day good point yeah so and there's it's rare for 30 30 things to see in a city right it's but crazy yeah and you're gonna be drinking so you need to so say you drink on the first day and the second day you need to recover the third day so you can travel you know so absolutely keep that in mind but that's that's That'd really good advice. That's good advice. I don't think I want to drink on uh, like dr- I don't want to be hung over on a traveling day. The main the main places I really want to yeah, party in. I'm I'm looking forward to like I think pubs would be cool. Mm-hmm. You know, like just sit kind of sit down with and kind of get to know the locals and just talk with them, um, and in a more like chill spot, well, yeah. regardless of the person's age. But I think it'd be cool to like go out and actually party and experience the club scene in Amsterdam and Barcelona. Oh, Those yeah, are my dude. main two spots where Amsterdam I actually want to like party. Sure. The Barcelona club scene is unbelievable. Really? Um, I think we might have hit this in your last pod. I think I talked about the club you, we hit in Barcelona. You went to London, Paris, and Barcelona. Is yeah. that right? Yeah, okay. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 I thought I remembered. I didn't know for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. I forget what the club was called in Barcelona, but. I'll figure it out. I have a journal, and it's written in there. Um, you literally, it looks like a shack. Like, a shack with, like, lights. And you walk in, and you pay cover, and then you go downstairs, and it takes How you How much is cover, if you don't mind me asking? Dude, I think it was, uh, like, 10 euros or something. It's not bad. It's not bad. I think it was 10 euros. And, yeah, and then you walk downstairs, and it's this gigantic fucking club with, like, lights going crazy and girls up dancing on tables and people everywhere like the place was stuffed and then it opens up to the beach and oh, like so cool. incredible i'll figure yeah, out what it's called and i'll get back to you because yeah, i mean totally. it was insane like it's a little literally it's like rodeo it looks like a shack <laughs> this like the size of this this room and then you go in and it's just gigantic like it's insane and people are out till 6 a.m wow like, you're gonna be out all night so check that out 
gonna be cool. I didn't even think to hit you up. I didn't even. There are so many like people that I know pretty well that I didn't even think to hit up and ask about Europe. You know, you kind of forget who's been where and whatnot, and yeah. people don't come to mind. But yes, yes, I'm I'm gonna hit you up with like personal recommendations in all of those places for sure. Because that's that's pretty much what I'm basing this trip off of. That just makes sense to me. Instead of Google, like. I'd rather talk to people about absolutely, you know, the ins and outs and what you discovered while you were there versus what somebody else discovered and also what I discover on my own. Yeah, it's gonna be cool. No, be so. Bro, if you feel like hitting China, swing through. Yeah, right. It's up to your boy. You should go to Troy in Turkey. You go in Asia in Asia Minor. You should sail across Greece, dude, and go to Troy. Like that, that. the story of the Trojan Horse. Mm-hmm. The, the story of the Trojan War. You'd see the wall. Mm-hmm. They have no it. fucking way. They have, it, cool. un- they have it unearthed now. There's actually so so the wall was rebuilt, I think, four times throughout the course of like 1,200 years. But the highest they ever got the wall was something crazy, dude. Like they got that wall like fucking 70 foot tall, dude. I mean, it was legit. Like may- I mean, maybe not as big as it is in the movie with Brad Pitt, you know. But the, I mean, dude, that'd be so fucking. Dope. It's just, yeah, it's just, massive just, in that movie. Ju- I mean, just to be able to stand in front of the gates of Troy. Oh, it'd be so cool. Where Achilles yelled for Hector and slayed his ass because of his because of his cousin. Dude, that would be I mean, that would just like just the sur- and then dragged him all the way back to the beaches on a chariot. Then just like just to be able to like just stand there and just be like Oh my God! Like the I'm shit standing that in went down the here. The shit that went down. I mean, how many men died 3,500 years ago, right here, fighting for one man's greed? Man, that's a cool story. I think you're gonna get that everywhere in Europe. That's true, though. Europe's just crazy. That's I mean, what's cool. The, the amount of history. I, I took an AP European history class in high school. Best class I ever took. Yeah. Really? My entire life. Yeah. I learned so much. I learned more in that class than probably any other class I've ever been in in my entire life. Shout out to Jim Herman, best prof- best teacher I've ever had Ayo. in my life. But yeah, dude, I learned so much about just I mean Europe in general. I mean, if you if you want to know history of Europe, talk. Like, I've I've never been to Europe. The only place out of the country I've been to is Cayman Islands, Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico. Shout Puerto out to, Rico. Sh- shout out to Bad Bunny, one of my favorite artists of all time. Um, Jamaica and Cozumel. Mm. So all those places, like mostly just Caribbean, but yeah, dude. If you, I mean, <laughs> to be to be able to go to Europe, I mean, the amount of history, dude. If you want to know history, hit hit me. I still got my AP Euro, AP Euro textbook, dude. I'll show you some of like just the all time greatest. I mean, some of the battles in Europe fought. I mean, dude, you have, dude. If 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 I were you, I would strongly recommend setting one of those cities aside and going to see the beaches of Normandy and just being able to see that. Is that D-Day? D-Day. Yeah. The invasion. Yeah. Dude, I've heard you just Eisenhower. feel yeah. the emotion when you're on the beach. You just, like, like look into the history first and look into the individual stories of people that were there and fought and died and people that lived and survived and the stories of the families and stuff and then go see it and stand on the beach and yeah. think about those stories and think about the emotional turmoil that those people went through. I mean, I th- it would just be unbelievable. Like really emotionally draining and just, just a powerful moment. I think it'd be cool. I remember when I was in high school. Where, where's that located in France? It's in France. It's in northern France, uh, kind of along like the English Channel area. It's just to the, it's just the west of the English Channel. Um, and it's, the, and it's, no, it's Normandy Beach. I forgot the town that's located near um but then is it normandy well i don't know if there's a town called normandy <laughs> but i know that it's it's the beaches of normandy if you're if, if if you're if you're trying to go look um if you're if you're if you're trying to go walk those but i remember back when i was in high school i did a for my government class we had to do a service project and i volunteered at the nursing home and i did 40 hours there and i made really good friends with this guy named victor he was like 88 or something like that but he had fought under General George Patton, and he had stormed the, he, or he had fought all the way through North Africa. And then after Patton was basically p- kind of put on hold for that stunt that he pulled, then he was, then he served under Eisenhower, and he stormed the beaches of Normandy. And then mo- a couple months after that, he got caught in the Battle of the Bulge, fought his way through that, and then invaded Berlin. 
<clears throat> Holy shit. Yeah, this dude. Dude's a badass. He's this dude seen had, history. This dude had seen some shit. Bro. Is, he still, is he still hanging in there? He's still fully fully with it he was Stud. totally fully like cognitive and he was and he would sit there and tell me stories and i'd literally just, just like catch myself just spending four hours talking to this guy where's this guy located he's back in yeah. Louis. how do i find this yeah. guy we gotta get him on the podcast talk to him. Yeah, yeah that would be he, dope he that would still, be insane he was still fully with it um he i mean if you think about it those people are very limited like i mean what the next 10 years you know to where you can actually find like a decent amount of those people. I wonder how many are actually still alive that actually fought on those beaches and in those wars. It's a good question. Interesting. Probably a very small percentage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I remember the last. Do you actually have contact information with him? I no, I don't. He's probably. I mean, this this was. Let's see. This was six years ago. So I mean, shit, dude. He'd be like ninety four by now if he's st- if he's still oh, there. Wow. You think he's but got a Facebook? Uh, <laughs> good question. Book, I remember baby. he he busted out this like ten f- box. And he showed me all the letters that he wrote to his wife um, while he was in the midst of these. And each each letter was, if I die today, just remember that I will always love you for all an eternity. You're going to make me did cry, Landon. <coughs> and wanna, it was just like the most, right the most emotional thing like I've ever kind of like witnessed. And I, I remember asking him what storming the beaches was, was like. And he's like, we got out of the amphibious vehicles the the platform dropped you know that let us out into, into the water where we were, we were then just to pretty much run and he says he remember he remembers looking at the hillside and he's like imagine if you just had a hundred million firecrackers and you just lit them all at once and he said that was the machine gun fire coming from the hills <laughs> down on us he's, and, and you could literally hear them it was and that was bullets. That it's was crazy. that was bullets just zooming past, zooming past. He's like, I, he had one skim his helmet. He watched his best friend take a bullet. Just as soon as the door dropped, he went out with his, I mean, just and was running with his Good feet night. and watched his friend just take a bullet right to the head. See you on the other side, and brother. And stormed that beach just full of rage and didn't didn't think twice and ran all the way to the cliffs, barricaded himself. Until paratroopers could clear out enough, you know, mach- machine gun nests and the cannon, you know, and this, the, ar- the artillery could clear out enough room for more guys to get there for them to actually invade. But he's like, honestly, I couldn't even, like, it just happened all so fast. He's like, but it was, I mean, Im- imagine just looking up at the hillside and seeing nothing but just fire. And it was all from the barrels of machine guns. It's crazy. Raining down on the, on the men storming those beaches. And just looking at that shit and just running towards it. I mean, imagine that. Put yourself there for a second. You have no choice but to run towards it. No choice. I bet a lot of people ran the other way. Yeah. And There's can now be found at the bottom of the sea. Yeah. <coughs> so. I mean, just, um, yeah. Anyway. Back to a more positive note. Now you got to go plan this Europe trip. Should we end it with the uh, the Taco Bell story? I said we were going to start it with the Taco Bell lost story. Lost in the sauce. I'll, yeah, I'll lost in the sauce. Got lost in the sauce. We're about to get lost in the sauce again, homeboy. So, me and Landon, big, big T-Bell buddies. It's every Always. time he's like, bro, you want to get dinner somewhere? Taco Bell. Let's this, get it. This is after we fixed your dryer. That's right. So, the, yeah, we worked on my dryer the other night. Got it figured out. Give me some, baby. Give me some. It was all about that dude. teamwork. It I was, will, I will never it was actually. I will never forget the moment, dude, when that dryer heated up. When that coil lit up. <laughs> Man, that was good. It was good. Anyway, so a- so it was actually before we got it to work. Uh, we went to the Lowe's, and then on the way back, we stopped at T-Bell. And mm. we, p- we landed and ordered freaking four spicy chicken mini quesadillas, like the animal that he is. Mm. And we pull up to the window, and he said, what sauces do you want? I said, bro, we're trying to get lost in the sauce. And he said, yeah, but what sauce? I was like, it doesn't matter. We want to get lost in the sauce. <laughs> and Landon's like, hot and mild, please. <laughs> like, hot and mild to work. And I'm like, yeah, but make sure you got a lot. We trying to get lost. But we trying to get lost. And so homeboy comes out with a bag. And we're like, okay, here's our food. He goes, here's your sauce. Entire Taco Bell bag. bag. Filled with hot and mild sauce. <laughs> no. And he's like, all right, boys, Full y'all. Bag. 
He's like, here's your sauce. Y'all are getting lost tonight. Oh. I've never seen so much Taco Bell sauce in my life. Me I don't even either. think they stocked the store with that much sauce. No, this dude was just that big of an OG. He just didn't care. He's like, all right, here you guys go. Here's and we, all of our we sauce. both freaked out. We both freaked out so hard. Like, yes. I lost Finally, my shit, dude. someone understands <laughs> what it means to get lost in the sauce. <laughs> Oh man! And, yeah, what it was. Night, dude. dude made my night. I hope we made his too. He did, he did make my night, it was man. Great. Was he was laughing great. when he came out with it? He was just like an OG, just kind of like an awkward guy, but like, dude, I mean, kept a straight face. He did. Poker Here's your face. sauce. Y'all are gonna get lost. You, yeah, everyone <laughs> getting lost, bro. This is hilarious. <laughs> yeah, that was just amazing. It was just absolutely. Where where can I watch your stand up, sir? Yeah, for real. <laughs> Favorite Taco Bell experience I've ever had in my entire life. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. It was good. We got lost. I still good. haven't been found. Yeah, anyway. still drowning in the yeah, sauce. Yeah, you guys swam here, right? Yeah, swam oh, here yeah, in a pool of hot and mild sauce. I swam <laughs> those mini chicken quesadillas deep into that sauce, dude. Took it off the diving board. Stormed the beaches of Storm, Normandy. Stormed the beaches of hot and mild sauce from <laughs> T-Bell, man. Eyes just blazing. Conquered that shit. Can't yeah. even breathe through your nose. Dude. Just oh, I'm jested. Fat Ange would have flipped her shit Bad if she saw that much sauce. <laughs> Good God. She would have flipped a fucking canoe if she <laughs> saw that sauce. <laughs> I bet she'd fucking sink in it, too. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that's fucking just remember, hilarious. she doesn't swim. <laughs> Uh, she, she doesn't do hills. Doesn't do hills. She doesn't do doesn't water. Doesn't do hills. Doesn't do water. <laughs> Poor Cass. I bet she does do Taco Bell sauce, though. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's man. fantastic. Have you talked to Fat Ange since the flow trip? Man, fuck no, dude. I, she tried to hit Cassie up on Facebook, dude. Uh, I think I think Cass, Brendan That's actually funny. Brendan actually friended her. Brendan Loki straight up friended her, dude. I thought that was amazing. I was like, dude, you are the real OG because you were the only one of it's us good that dude. ever do shout that. Shout out, Brendan. He, so shout out to Brendan, man. McKenna the for being the goat. My life. This guy sounds like a G, man. I still have his, his fishing shirt at my house. No, Washed no it for him. It's, it's just folded. Just nice. sit, sitting on my desk. There you go. Just waiting. Yep. Oh, man. Well, cool. Do you want to talk about China anymore? Man, I think I kind of hit all the T's. Um, Which I I thought of the eyes. I know we already said this, but you should definitely do Japan. You know, because yeah. I'm sure China and Japan are so different from the U.S., but I'm so I'm sure they're so different from each other. Yeah, as well. exactly. And and from our uncultured American perspective, we just see it as it's all Asia, right? It all seems yeah. so similar. And like if we were to see a Japanese person versus a Chinese person, like in like walking the halls in Missouri State, I don't know if we'd be able to tell the difference. I know I can't. I can't. And that, I like, couldn't. I assume they're all Chinese, but they mm-hmm. could easily be Indonesian, Korean, mm-hmm. Chinese, Japanese, like Vietnamese, Mongolian. And exactly. And there's so many differences between those cultures. Uh, and I'm just, yeah, I'm just pumped to see that. Dude, are you going to ride a motorcycle across the Great Wall? You know, you might have to make probably that not. Happen. I can try. I can try. But so far, it's not on the agenda. <laughs> Oh man, you gotta evil can evil that shit, dude. Yo, yo, dude, that would be amazing. I would so do that. I would, I, I, I would also go to, dude. I don't know. I feel like going to Mongolia, and like looking at like, I don't know, just seeing some of the, see, seeing some of the, Genghis Khan, Attila the Hun, memorabilia there, dude. Have you guys ever watched the movie Mongol? No, I haven't. I would highly recommend watching to anybody listening. I would highly, if you've listened this far, you've got to watch it. But to anybody that's willing, they should, you should so watch the movie Mongol. It's all about the life and the conquerors and essentially just a story of how Genghis Khan built his empire. I think I have seen oh, it. Oh, wow. It's, it's a good it's film. it's all in ancient Mongolian l- language. It's not in it's 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 all in that you know old time Mo- I mean Mongol language whatever they spoke and the battle scenes in that movie are just insane because the the real battle scenes I mean these are you're talking battles involving a million men yeah 
I mean, it's it, it is it's nuts. I mean, At a time when the population was so much smaller, right, right. But that's that's how the Mongols roll, dude. When they, when they pulled up, they pulled up with a million strong. Wow. I mean, they were ready to rumble. A million? Is that is I that mean, for real? I mean, dude, they it was yeah. There's battles recorded where the Mong I mean, where the, where the Mongols would pull up with I mean, just hundreds and hundreds of thousands of horsemen. I mean, just overwhelming amounts of people. I mean, it's a lot of fucking like, horses. Yeah, for real. I mean, just insane. And that's, I mean, that they would just, and they just ride all together, uh, just anywhere. I mean, why Savages. do you think, I mean, w- when you look at the Mongol Empire, it was, what, six times bigger in area than the Roman Empire? Yeah. It was massive. Oh, wow. I mean, it was almost all of Asia. That was how big their empire was at one time. Was it before or after Rome? Uh, I'll, I, before I, I, it was before, but before. it went into the same. It went into like I mean, they were kind of concurring at the same time too. Oh wow! You know, and it can the Mongol. But here's the thing: like the Mongol Empire. I mean, like whenever they whenever they conquered something, they kind of just like let them be. You know, as long as they like paid their dues and paid their taxes, like they kind of just let them run shit however they wanted to run it, as long as they just paid the fee. You know, to to the Mongols. But I mean, they would just kind of come in. I, 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 a lot of times, they wouldn't even like ransack i mean i mean yes they would but like a a lot of times they just kind of pull up and be like hey like you know you you can either surrender now or we're going to rape and pillage your village so you know we have we have a million men you guys have what you know six dudes with sticks like i mean we're gonna take this shit just pay us 20 percent of whatever you make and we're just we'll just let you live live on your own that's how they kind of did it that's how their that's how their empire was massive like they didn't they didn't they didn't structure that shit like the romans it was just kind of like a free for all, but yeah, it was massive. I mean, they at the height of their power, it was like almost all of Asia. Wow, it was huge. Think <laughs> about the stick forts that those motherfuckers built. Massive. It probably fireplace or fireplaces. Definitely had some fireplaces. Bathrooms perhaps, that run down perhaps, the creeks. Yeah, probably run, running probably, bathrooms. Probably down in glaciers. Amazing. Yeah. How about that? Impressive. Amazing. Drinking the rivers. I mean, have you ever heard the the term "drink a river dry"? Maybe or an or, or an I, army I get the point. or an I get the army point. an army so big it drinks the river dry. No, I haven't heard that one. Really? Well, that I've heard the term "suck a pod dry." Suck a pod dry. <laughs> there you go. Well, that comes from the <laughs> that that comes from the Mongols. Well, hold on. No, sorry, I might be that e- either comes from the Mongols or it comes from King Xerxes. Have you ever seen the movie Three Hundred? No, I haven't seen that. And somebody asked me that the other day. Bro. And I was like, I need to watch that. Bro. I need to watch that. One, watch the movie. Two, do their ab workout because it's fire. Yeah. They do it in the. They have an ab workout in the movie. No, <laughs> but when no. okay, you know the what? the ab workout that they used to train, that three times a day. Uh, Landon introduced me to it. It's mm-hmm. incredible. It's just oh, like the actors for that movie. Mm-hmm. Wait, I think I've done it with you. I've done that. I've done the 300 ab workout with you. Oh, really? Remember that time that we did those two workouts back to back. Which one was which? The first one was the 300 workout. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, with the oblique crunches, the weird ass like side it's oblique crunches. It's 300 uh-huh. reps in three sets. Yeah. Of abs. Holy yeah. Shit. It's the 300 yeah. workout. Yeah. So it's three sets of 100 reps. Yeah. It's great stuff. It's great stuff. It's what how do you guys you think? You guys abs. trying to rip out an ab workout right now? I'm kind of feeling some abs. Low key. <laughs> Landon's in. Jordan's skeptical. I, I'm just over here. I'm like, yeah. Blah, 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 blah. I did like what 20 sets of those. I don't want to sound like a pussy, today. but <laughs> it is kind of late. But whatever. I don't know. I'm down. I'm also down to hit that too. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of that. Talk, maybe let's do it. Fuck it. Let's Europe. do an ab workout. Let's do it. Hey, oh. Before we hit that, <laughs> yeah. then do an ab workout. I like that idea. I yeah. like that idea Double best. down. True. Double down, Double bro. down. Best of both worlds. There or should we, we call it quits on the pod then? I'm down. Yeah, bro. Thanks for having cool. us. Absolutely. Yeah, it's been, it's been for, fun this has been fuck. fun, man. To whoever's listening, dude, you know, keep it real. Keep it breezy. Keep it easy. And just, you know. Keep it life, breezy. Man. Keep it easy. <sighs> you know. I think we spent the first half talking about only a float trip and Nick addiction. Yeah. yeah. For like an hour. That and was pretty great. much. Yeah. That and, yeah. And then we got off on Europe and Mongols and. And then almost shooting up. Uh, and then almost shooting this dude that pulled up in front of my house. You know, now I'm kind of glad I didn't pull that trigger, man. I could have gotten in trouble <laughs> a lot earlier. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, man. So it's been good. Hope to uh, hope to be back soon. I'm real. really yeah, man, happy looking. this worked out like the way it did because uh, 
I, I texted Caleb the other day because I was driving I was driving home and I passed up the Bass Pro uh, half marathon and I was like, oh shit, Caleb's running in that. I was out so there. So I was like, I, I texted him. I'm like, oh, he's probably wrapping up around this time. So I texted him while driving. I'm not encouraging anybody to do that, but anyway, I um, yeah texted him. And I was like, hey, like how did your how the half marathon go? And then uh, a few hours later, I was like, dude, we should do a podcast together. I'm leaving in December and whatnot. And then I've been wanting to get you on, so it was like the best of both worlds. You know? Perfect. There we go. I yeah. remember Caleb, you, you know, you hit me up. You're like, hey, you want to do a podcast at Jordan's? And, and like, at the same time, you guys were at the gym together. There, how about yeah. This is ridiculous. So, yeah, that? this worked out. It was good. How about that? It was kind of weird how it all, like, just S- crossed paths and whatnot. Stars aligned. Dude, it's the mysteries of the universe. Love if you guys it. want to do another before semester ends, like, I'm, I'm, I'm down. actually, like, quitting work. I pretty much got my grades secured for the semester, and... I'm I wish I pretty could much I'm good to go. I'm good to go is what I'm saying. You know, I think we should do it shirtless. Let's do it. There we go. Let's do it. Yeah. After the 300 ab workout, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Maybe maybe that. show show the viewers and the listeners the ab workout right here on the table. Who I'm knows? Cool yeah. That. <laughs> Just get after it. Maybe even, get do, a little, it. Maybe even do a little tutorial. Yeah. Yeah, if you want to follow along, we're just flexing the whole time. There's gonna be a lot of grunts involved, <laughs> but you know, if you're down and listen, yeah. listening to that, I, I I agree with your point, Caleb. Yep. Great point, Lando. Yep. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. WWE voices <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> and in this corner, and coming under the left side of the ring, weighing in at 165 pounds. That's how you do it. That's good. <laughs> that's good. Well, that's it. Yeah, let's kill it. Woo. Yes. Yeah.